Hello, hello, and welcome to Dundalk, Maryland. Welcome to Maryland Championships Wrestling's Shamrock Cup 10. I'm Mark Bray. Alongside me is Tiny Tim. We're ready to get things going here. This is a night where these guys are putting their bodies on the line, their careers on the line, not for a payday, not for a championship, but in honor of Brian Shane Shamrock Hauser. That being said, I'm talking to everyone in the locker room except, quite possibly, your reigning MCW champ, Kent Brink. There's a strain. That's not like our champion to uh, try and win something on his own. Well, uh, more interestingly enough... A title almost as prestigious as becoming the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup winner. Absolutely. Seems a little bit of envy here on the part of the champ. More, more to come on Ryan McBride in a second, man. And Kemp Brink is talking about him possibly winning the Shamrock Cup tonight and challenging for the title. Why don't you the music come out here? That's right, just like you just said, Ryan McBride, last year's winner of the Shamrock Cup, is coming out now, the first match to take on Kent Brink for the belt. That, that, that's unbelievable to me, and, and well... I know a little bit about a peg leg, but this is a salad peg. Lost his leg. Get ready for the green room. I hope, I hope they have this roof reinforced because when this man comes out, he's not only looking to become the MCW Heavyweight Champion, he's looking tonight as the 2009 Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup winner to become the 2010 Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup winner. And there he is, Mark. There is Ryan McBride, the challenger for the title and the reigning Shamrock Cup winner. What the hell are you saying? I can't even hear you. He's going to have a heck of a time tonight there, Tiny. He's going to have to come out, compete now, try and win the title, and then later on tonight, he will have to compete to try and hold on and become that two-time Cup winner. Before we were rudely interrupted by the MCW Heavyweight Champion, who, since being the Heavyweight Champion, <laughs> As I was saying, the MCW champ does have an issue, does have reason as our reigning champ to come out and have his issues talked about. I, I can't get a word out here, Mark. Jesus. Someone's got to take the mic, aw mic away from the uh, champion there. Now you go do it. Oh, not me. You're more qualified than I am. On a night where we pay homage to one of our fallen brothers, on a night where we pay homage to a man who is who is beloved in the Maryland wrestling scene, in Brian Shane Shamrock Hauser, we're opening up in a historic way on a historic night in the biggest independent wrestling event in the area. Talking about the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup, we're opening up 2010's 10th event with a heavyweight title match. This is unprecedented. Mark. You know what, Tony? I gotta agree with you. I've never seen anything like that, and I guarantee you this is gonna be a hell of a match. There is no love loss between these two competitors. No. And although <laughs> Kent Brink has the clear size advantage over Ryan McBride, Ryan McBride will use his skill, flying, his high flying skill, to see what he can do here. And I gotta tell you, this is standing room only for this one. Uh, 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 hold on, just soak it in, soak in the moment here. Mark, you brought up a good point there. Those two just went nose to nose. You see the height advantage. You see the size advantage on the reigning champ, Brink. And that is 
exactly where it comes into play, Mark. Kent Brink's going to use his size and try and throw around and wear down the challenger early here. Ryan McBride is going to have to keep keep away from the champ because if the champ gets him at hold, it's going to be hard enough, to, well, he, he, especially he, when he does things like that. Hold on, cover. Not even a one count. You ain't going to catch my Ryan McBride catching the paint dry here. Might hey, be a little zealous on the champ right there. I, I don't want to bust your chops early, man, but you may have been the king of un uh, uh, underestimation when you said there's no love loss between these two. These two have had a serious issue going on now for the better part of a year here in Maryland Championship Wrestling. And again, the size advantage of the champ. And, and, you, know, you know the initials, KMFB, Kent Brink. Oh, yeah, this yeah, is, yeah, this, yeah. This is I know, I know. show there, Tiny. Well, you may learn why there's some of the agility on the part of McBride. But look, man, Brink has yet to leave his feet. The champ has yet to be taken off that vertical base. Ryan McBride trying to use as much as he can, and he finally gets the champ off of his feet. Ryan look, McBride's turn. Look for McBride to try to dictate a quick pace. Look for Kent Brink and a cover. Two. Whoa, man. man. We almost had an early night for the champ there, Mark. That was a quick and right in the face, and the champ goes down. And this blade goes up. Here comes a pin. One, two, and another near fall. We almost had another champ there, Tiny. If fans could win you a match, if fans could win you a championship, if fans could take Ryan McBride to become a two-time Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup winner, they would because the obvious support is in the corner of the challenger and the 2009 winner. You can't argue that, Mark. You're absolutely right there, Tiny. Ryan McBride tried to go up top, but the champ got out, but Ryan McBride counters, and the champ is hurting on the outside. Well, let, let's talk about this for a second. I think the ego... Holy God! That's why they call it crash and burn. That's why they call it high risk, high reward, and that's why Brink is your MCW champ. No, you're absolutely right there. Kent Brink did not win the championship when on a fluke. He is smart when he is in the ring and outside. And the experience goes to Kent Brink. The, the big profile matches, the big profile experience goes to Brink. The guy is a former WWE developmental superstar. He was in Florida Championship Wrestling for a time. He competed alongside the likes of, of Nexus's Wade Barrett. The guy has the goods. Ken Ryan McBride, who has very little national experience, compete with the likes of Kent Brink. That remains to be seen. And we got a pin one, two, and almost a three count there. Ryan McBride, I don't know how he kicked out of that one. Kent Brink at complete control of this matchup right now. At the moment, I, I feel like a real jerk yelling here, but it's so so damn loud in here, Mark. I can, I can, I can barely hear myself. <laughs> Look at these stiff unmitigated power on the part of Kent Brink. Kent Brink doesn't just want to win this match. He wants to send a message. He wants to make the McBride... Hold on. Near leg hooks. Another pin. He wants to send a message. He wants McBride to be in pain and in no shape to defend that cup later on. And that's the thing, you talk about the, the lack of love loss here on the part of these two. Not only does, does Brink want to maintain his championship status, he's got a personal issue with Ryan McBride. He's got a personal issue. He doesn't want to see Ryan McBride lose just here in this match and regain his championship. Brink wants Ryan McBride to enter the Shamrock Cup, an injured man, the walking wounded, so he cannot go on and become a two-time and a 2000 and Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup winner. And if that's not proof for a personal issue, I don't know what is, Mock. And a kick right into the chest of the challenger. Here comes a pin. One, two, and almost another two count. Ryan McBride, I don't know how he kicked out of that one. Ken Brink is, is methodically, methodically tearing down this challenger piece by piece. I, I don't know if it's so much methodical as just dropping an A-bob, so to speak. Just, just going to work on it, man. Working every body part. And that's the thing, when there's hate involved, when there's anger involved in an issue between two superstars, there's no telling what can happen. Sometimes the opportunity oh for injury goodness. is so much higher. Hold on, the shoots a half, cover. Oh, another near fall. The opportunity for injury is so much more present, but, but also the opportunity for mistake. When you got anger there, you can make a mistake, Mark, and that's big. You're absolutely right. 
I know I'm right. That's why they brought me along here. Yeah. The champ once again going to work on the neck and arm of the challenger here. The crowd, these fans are clearly in the corner of Ryan McBride and Kemp Brink. You know that's got to get to him just a little bit. Man, they, on, a, on a night where oh. history will undoubtedly be made one way or another, Ryan McBride opens up this event challenging the MCW Heavyweight Champion, Kemp Brink, for his very coveted title. And a beautiful leg lariat. Do you see the quickness out of McBride? Able to do that from a standing position. No momentum. Just able to pop it off like that. Unbelievable. There is, there is absolutely no doubt why this man is the number one contender for the MCW Championship. He's showing it and he's proving it in the ring right now. Both competitors are down. One of them has to get to their feet. And, and this is the first time since the since the, the word go in this match that we've seen the champ reeling a little bit. And now McBride doing what he does best. Not only those aerial maneuvers, but this is a scrappy challenger, man. And he's bringing those rights. You know, Tiny, just because he's a high flyer and, whoa, Lindic. Yeah, the just, guy's from Baltimore, man. He can throw it out. Just because he's a high flyer, don't let that mistake you. He's got a lot of power in that upper body. He can square up with anybody. And a beautiful sequence of standing drop kicks with a little stank added on to him. The champ seems to be in a daze here and a nice slam. McBride is feeling it now. He's got to be soaking up the, all the fans, all the energy in this room. Some guys feed off of negativity. Some guys feed off of positivity. McBride, one of those guys. Two. Uh, Whoa, my. I thought we had a new champion right there, Tiny. Sweet Jesus, Joseph and Mary. I mean, I, I was pretty much ready to come out of my seat there. I didn't even buy a seat, and all I need is the edge. I thought we had a new champ, but that's what makes Kent Brink so capable, so dangerous. The champ said definitely hurting in his midsection. Ryan McBride off the top rope, and wow! Man, those, those feet are just... Uh, they're deadly. They're deadly. Two. Look, the near leg. Oh, my goodness. How close? How close has Ryan McBride come to becoming the MCW Heavyweight Champion on so many different occasions? For God's sakes, Mark, it's the first match. It's the first night, and you know what? That's what Maryland Championship Wrestling is all about. Coming out and giving you the best that the superstar of the MCW have to offer every time. Whoa, 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 whoa. On the top row. Top here. of the burning building. Coming up. Oh Look at that. Look at the cat like reflexes. Champ gets out whoa. of the way. Lights out right there. Explosive. Let's, let's see if the champ can capitalize on this one. A little too much time, but he may have him. Another two count. If we're going on closeness of near falls, if we're going on who's gotten the closest within an inch, a hair of an inch, of becoming the heavyweight champion or retaining the championship, you got to give it to Ryan McBride. I, I, I'm thinking maybe he may have Brink's number, but then again, whenever I think that, Brink comes off with some sort of explosive maneuver and stuffs the challenger. And Double legs, the bridge, two, oh my, my goodness. I'm going to have a heart attack out here. I got a long night ahead of me. Yes, you do. And now the champion has something to say here. Ryan McBride on the ground. Oh, he's going to try it again. A heart issue may be the only physical issue I don't have. Speaking of physical issues. Oh my goodness. I, Good night, Ryan McBride. The champ's got to capitalize on this one. He goes down two and oh my gosh, another almost three count. The champ looks like he's taking some issue with the ref there. I don't know. That was pretty damn close to a three. Man, that, that, that's a discretionary call there. I don't blame the champ for, for perhaps questioning our official Chris Clow on that, on that count, but never Nevertheless, this one's still going on. The challenger still in the game. Even though right now he may not know where he is. Up on the shoulders of the champ. McBride there with those, those quick feet. Again, using those quick feet. Able to land with those reflexes. Able to snap off a maneuver. A a almost within the blink of an eye. Don't blink, Mark. You might miss something out of the challenger. We this doesn't look good, does it? No, it doesn't. It looks like Ryan McBride is, is setting up so he can do a little what, what he's good at and what he's known for. A little aerial maneuvers here. 
Ryan McBride trying to get up ain't, to that top row to make something happen here. He ain't nothing, quick. Ain't nothing little about the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup. Ain't nothing little about the 10th incarnation. Oh, 450. Oh, that's got to be it. One, two, and oh, oh my, my God. God. Incredible. Did you see that, Tiny Tim? There's no way that the champ could have possibly kicked out of it, but you know what? He did. My freaking cane almost came out of my hand. I almost threw it on the floor there. How, how close are we going to get to a title retention? How close are we going to get to a new champion? I can't handle this much more, Mark. And we got the tournament hasn't even started to crown the 2010 Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup winner. I tell you what. We and keep in mind, hold on, I'm sorry to cut you off, man. If Ryan McBride, if capable, has to compete, he's got to buy his 2009's winner. Ryan McBride trying to do, going to try, try and go the submission route. It's what you call the Texas Cloverleaf traditionally. He can turn I believe it. he calls it the Irish Cloverleaf. If he, if can, he can turn, turn it. it. Exactly. Look at the legs of our champion, though. Look how thick they are. Do you understand the difficulty? Yeah. Well, I think Ryan McBride does Ryan now McBride to wrap that around. That may not be the route he wants to go with a man the size of Kent Brink. And wow, that just, he looked like Ray Lewis right no, there. No. That was just unbelievable. He just took Ryan McBride out. And I'll tell you one thing. This is just the opening match. And, and I love that, man. I love... I, I love the lack of finesse. Oh, well, there, there's a real lack of finesse. The I love the lack of finesse. I love ugly boxing, dirty boxing. I love the ugliness, the meanness, the 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 scintillating ugliness out of our champ. Hold on, it looked like what a spine buster! Awesome there, he just jumped up and did a nah, man. The champ's highly, real and the champ's spine real. buster. Mark, don't let him fool you. The champ's hurting those ribs. He tried to nip up there. Couldn't even do there it. Goes the pin. One, two. Will we get a three? Oh my goodness! I, I hate to, I hate to go to the old bag of cliches here, but when are one of these guys going to pull out the kitchen sink? Because <laughs> I don't see anybody going down anytime soon. The How much more sink? can a man take? The kitchen sink, Tiny. You're beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. That's why they call me the pimp with the limp. Now, champion here, Kent Brink, is, is, is getting unhappy here. He's starting to unravel a little bit here. Another underestimation on your part. Unhappy? No. Uh, There's a little finesse. You? you know what you fear more than a powerful big man? A powerful big man with agility. And Kent Brink... Kent Brink brings that to the table, and he's going oh, for it. Oh, well. And that just took out the ref there. We got a ref down in the first matchup. In a championship match! Oh my gosh! In the Hope you didn't blink your eye, Mark, like I said. Looks blink like of an eye. There was able Hold on, we've got a little problem here. Oh my god, Tyler Hill and Adam Cole outside. These are Kent Brink's cronies. Ugly, and you know, obvious disqualification. But Chris Clow, our official, is out cold. Adam Cole and Tyler Hilton. And, and, and here's here's what's interesting. Ken Brink sent these two to the back, and now it's obvious. Come on, Tiny. They did need you, him. Did you really think they were going to stay back there? Somebody get out. It's Kobe and Kobe and coming to the end of Ryan McBride. The big man is in the house. Ouch! Hello! Adam Cole is hurting now. Keep an eye on Brink. Oh, oh man, you hear that smack? Steel on flesh. The MC Heavyweight Champion Ship just took Kobe and out of the picture. Kobe and is hurting. Look, and, and this is down. The ref is down. Ryan McBride doesn't stand a chance. This is what you call a feeding frenzy. Without the referee's eyes on the action right now, Kent Brink can have his way. Can toy with the challenger. Down. Somebody's got to do something. Why don't you go in there and do something? Not about a this? chance. This is going to be it. Kent Brink retains the MCW Heavyweight Championship. In and he kicked out. Oh my God! You oh gotta be issuing me. me. Tommy Dreamer! Tommy Dreamer in the MCW ring! And Tyler Hill and Adam Cole go to work on him real quick. The innovator of violence has arrived, has returned, and it may be a short lived comeback for Mr. Dreamer. Oh, Kobe on the champ. 
Oh, that had to hurt. That's over. And Tommy Dreamer breaks away from Helton and Cole. Tommy Dreamer and Kobian inside the ring. Holy crap, Tiny Tim. This is the opening match. The World Championship match at the Shamrock Cup 10. Um, is it me or did the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup just get extreme? Holy the cover. One, One, two, three. Oh, my God. I almost... The hair on the back of my neck is standing up right now, Tiny Tim. I don't even know what else to do. I'm gonna lose my voice before this match is even over. I think the hair on the top of Kobe is head standing up, and that fool's ball! Ryan McBride, the first one to his feet, getting the champ in position. Kobe and Tommy Dreamer, ringside, rooting on the champ, as well as all of these MCW fans. This is the third time we've seen McBride go for that 450. He, count, he, he countered it once, recovered once, hit it a second time, couldn't get the pinfall. Can he hit it this third time? And if he does, will it be good night, nurse, for the MCW Heavyweight Champ? Champion is still reeling, but no! And a move of death. Uh, he hits the top. Dude, how smart, how smart is you the MCW what? heavyweight champ? Whether you like him or you don't, he is the champ, and he's a smart, smart competitor. And a big-time player. Tommy Dreamer, the innovator of violence, is out here. Kobian is out here, and still, Kent Brink maintains his composure, maintains eyes in the back of his head, and, and, and I don't know if I'm about to eat my words here. And Ryan McBride up on top once again, trying to make Make history trying to win his first MCW heavyweight title. Here comes the well, and will he get the pin? One, two, three. We have a new champion, ladies and gentlemen, right here, right now. Ryan McBride is your new MCW champion. Emotion in this room right now. Right now we're ready to begin the qualifying rounds for the Shamrock Cup. In the first matchup, we're going to see Rinse Swan versus Ruckus, a repeat of the hell of a match they had at the anniversary show. Now, Tiny, what does it mean to compete in this tournament? I'll tell you what it means. It means more than a payday. It means more than a championship. Even though we just saw what a championship means. Hold that thought. It means 
this. I'm going to put it this way to you, Mark. It means Christian York. It means Keenan Creed. It means reckless youth Tom Carter. It means this man Ruckus. It means Josh Daniels, Derek Frazier, our new MCW Heavyweight Champion Ryan McBride, and WWE Superstar Joey Mercury. It means that. Those are our past winners. Guys that have paid homage, that have fought through the ranks, fought through the tournament to become the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup winners. Now keep in mind, Mark. Ryan McBride gets a pass. He won 2009's tournament. These other competitors don't get that luxury. They're going to fight their way up the ranks. You're absolutely right, Tiny. And here comes Rich Swan's opponent, Ruckus, who is a former winner of the Shamrock Cup himself back in 2006. These two guys are no strangers to each other in the ring. At the MCW anniversary show earlier this year, these two put on a hell of a match. Ruckus, the veteran, versus the up-and-coming newcomer, Rich Swan. Ruckus is a fan favorite here in Dundalk, and I tell you what, there is a ton of mutual respect between these two competitors. The AJ Styles of the Black and Mild. He's got about a thousand of them. I can't even tell them all. That is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you talk about the uh, the reincarnation of Maryland Championship Wrestling. I signed up to Bone Breakers Wrestling School. I was 17 years old in the year 2000, okay? Danny McDevitt, Corporal Punishment, put his passion, put his life in to the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup. And 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 when it became too much, when it became too much to maintain, when Danny McDevitt decided to, to focus on his personal he, he, he took a sabbatical, but now MCW is being reincarnated. It was reincarnated in 2006, and that man right there, Ruckus, was the first ever Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup winner in 2006 after the reincarnation of this prestigious tournament. And you talk about prestigious tournaments of professional wrestling. This is up there. You talk about big wrestling events. I'm not talking about the WrestleManias of the world. I'm talking about... I'm talking about the likes of the Super 8. Huge tournaments. Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup brings so much respect. That's why the best from all over the globe come to compete. The best like Ruckus. The best like Rich Schwann. The best like Tommaso Ciampa. The best like Ryan McBride. All those competitors know what it means to be a part of this. And right now, oh, we're seeing a little bit of uh, a little acrobatics here. Rich Schwann is able to get out of that one. And Rich Swan to the outside, but not for long. The ruck is down on his back, but he gets right yeah. back up. And I tell you what, Tiny Tim, you're going to see a ton of this throughout this matchup. See, see, man, this is one of those moments where I'm happy I'm not the play-by-play -play guy because I don't have to call the madness. Good luck keeping up with this. I got to tell you what, my tongue has already been tied a few times in this matchup. Rich Swan, now Ruckus, Ruckus, now Rich Swan. You can never tell. They're always just going back and hey, forth. Hey, do you see the uh, do you see the mats on the outside that they're landing on? I don't see any mats. No, you don't there. see any mats. That's concrete that Ruckus just got tilt the world, hurricane rotted upon. And now these two are exchanging chops back and forth, striking the flesh off each other's chest. Ain't nothing pretty about what's going on on the outside of the green room. Ruckus is gonna Ruckus is trying to get things going here quite early on in the matchup oh against his back hard against the ring there that has got to hurt right there but you know what ruckus knows what he has to do he knows what he has to do to win to get into that matchup to win the shamrock yeah. cup let's he's to do whatever he's got to do to make that happen here's what's at stake man a spot a spot in the most prestigious match in independent wrestling a spot in the shane shamrock memorial cup match a six-man match Oh, oh, draping him over that guardrail. The winner of this will advance something to the finals. Something tells me that was just a setup. Oh, something tells you that? Something tells you that? Well, what does this tell you, Mark? It tells me that Rich Swan's about to get hurt. Oh, Holy, God. Holy mother of God. Damn.
That was a kick right to the head of Rich Swan. Rich Swan is on the ground. Referee trying to do what he can to get these two back into the ring. I, I think it's in the best interest of Mr. Swan that they get back up in the uh, ring there. I, 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 and you got to wonder, I know in the past there's been a double disqualification or a double countout on a Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup or, or an injury, and that means you lose the spot. If we get a double countout here, that means nobody advances in this matchup. Nobody knows these rules like you do there. Uh. <laughs> no, there's people that know them. Oh, my gosh. That would have been pretty if he landed it, but Ruckus saw nothing but the yellow mat on that one. Rich Swan going to try to capitalize on that with a pin, and he did just a two count there. It, 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 this is why a little more than that, don't you think? I think it is. Uh, I think we're so early in the first quarter in this matchup. Holy but keep in mind, it only takes three seconds for him across the orbital bone. Two count. And look at this. going to try it again. Two. And, ooh. Something I want you to think about here, Mark. Every time you go for a, a, a lateral press, every time you go for the pinfall, it exerts energy to kick out. Rich Swan knows what he's doing. Another pin. Two. And, oh, it's only a two count. Once again, Ruckus, a seasoned veteran. It's going to take a little bit more than that to put him out of this tournament. Ruckus is a guy that I've known for a long time, man. Native has uh, has really worked his way up the ranks to become a, a sensation in the professional wrestling industry, and that is a reason why innovative maneuvers like and that. One, two, will it be three? Not enough. Speaking speaking of innovative, um, did you happen to catch the innovator of violence, Tommy Dreamer, current TNA superstar, former ECW champion, Thanks. in the building already? Did you happen to catch I tell you that what, we have a new MCW heavyweight champ? I tell you what, I think the people. Passing on 695 caught that. And Here Rich Swan catching those shoulders. That was your segue. Man, yeah, those two three a softball there. You know what? You're absolutely right. But don't forget, don't forget, like you were saying, Tommy Dreamer is going to be in action a little bit later on tonight. I, I, I think Tommy Dreamer already got his licks in. I know the guy's still got something left. I, I know Tommy pretty well. And, uh, Tommy's one of those guys that he ain't leaving until he makes an impression. Absolutely. And I feel like Tommy has just gotten started here tonight at the 10th Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup. You know, I tell you what, I apologize for missing that segue a little bit earlier, but how can you how can you even pay attention to anything else but this matchup going on in the ring right here? These two competitors are so evenly matched. Except That's true. one has more experience than the other, but man, physically, these guys always put on a it's match. True of legend. That's true. Oh, there's a stiff forearm in the corner out of Rich Swan. I've never seen Rich Swan in action. I'm impressed thus far, man. Look at him. I'm gonna hook up. Oh, gonna man. Him. Look at that One. sunset driver. Two. Oh, my goodness. See, and, and, and that's the problem. That's maybe where experience would have come into hand for Rich Swan. He didn't catch him right. He didn't keep his shoulders on the mat upon impact. No, Ruckus was able to roll through a little bit. I think that's what led to the kick there. out. Rutch Swan's going to try and get Ruckus against the ropes. Ruckus trying to do a little... Oh, man. This version of the crucifix submission. This is going to hurt. This has got to hurt. I, I ask you. I mean, if you could... If you could imagine the most innovative maneuvers in professional wrestling, if you could just think about what you would do to a human being, I swear to God, Ruckus, Ruckus sits in the lab and just thinks about ways to hurt people. Holy, I don't know how he can get out of this one. One, two... Wow, Rich that's how you get out of that it. bottom rope is called a lifeline right there. That's, uh, that's good ring presence, though, out of the, the, the semi-rookie. That rich, that's good ring presence. Absolutely. Be aware of his surroundings, knowing the bottom rope was there to be able to get out of that pinning predicament because he knows what's at stake, a spot in the finals of the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup. Rich Swan seems to be seeing stars at the moment. Ruckus is going to capitalize on that. Yeah, he's rich in the Swan ring with one. Back. Miss clothesline. Oh! Kick to the head by Rich Swan on the former Shamrock winner and former champ, Ruckus. Ruckus seems to be out in the center of the ring. Rich Swan looks like he's ready to make something happen here. Let's see if he can make it work. Booyaka Shah, that kick may have knocked 
may have knocked the chocolate out of Rutgers the City. Standing for 50. Find the young blood and the young advances in the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup. You want to talk about an upset? Well, do you want to talk about upsets? Because if I'm a betting man, I would have put my money on the 2006 winner of this cup, Ruckus. Instead, the young blood rises to the occasion. Absolutely. The youngster, Rich Swan, advances in the tournament. Ruckus, though, no, that was not an easy thing to do right there. And we'll see if there's a some sort of... Well, Ruckus has something uh, he thinks he might have to say here to the guy who just beat him. See, this is one of those occasions where that shows the respect for this event. That shows the respect that these competitors have for Shane Shamrock, for each other, for the honor for the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup. Advancing to the finals, Mr. Standing 450 himself, Rich Swan. Well, Mark... I hope you paced yourself, ma'am. I hope you paced yourself because it's already been an exciting night. We've already seen Rich Swan advance to the finals of the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup, the 10th Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup, which I didn't see coming. We have also seen and crowned a new heavyweight champion in Ryan Hunt, who also has beat in the finals. <laughs> Challenger here. And this guy's oddly endearing enough to the uh, to the MCW audience. That's right. Former member of the Switchblade Conspiracy, Sammy what? Callahan. What does that mean? Let me ask you a question here, Mark. Uh, is Switchblade conspiracy like? Is that like when you make a rock band name and you just kind of you just kind of put two weird words together? What does that mean? Well, that, first of all, that would be the name of their tag team. Second oh. of all, ouch! And we're, wow, look at that, Sammy Callahan really getting it in here strong. He's going Get, for it. He wants. He, he gets it in for show. I don't know if Scott Reed really knew what he was biting wow. off when he wanted to compete tonight. See, I, I, I've, I've caught through the rumor mill. I've caught uh, uh, bits and pieces about this Sammy Callahan. And what I've heard is unorthodox, intense, and and he's not disappointing. Scott Reed, I know very little about, and I'm hoping to learn more here. I'll tell you what, he's a strong competitor with that clothesline. Well, that you better believe it. And the wind right out of Callahan's. If Callahan's coming at you in Sail fifth there. gear, right in fifth gear, Mark. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut off there. But if he's coming at you in fifth gear like that, you got to make a move. you got to do something to shut the guy down. Otherwise, you're going to get murdered. You're going to get slaughtered. And you ain't going to the finals, Daddy. Holy smokes, Sammy Callahan on the top rope. And a face full of feet right there for Reed. One, two, and almost a near fall there. But these two competitors look like they came to fight. And I don't think anyone's going to give up that soon in the match. Oh, woohoo! Well, after. Slap right to the I, chest there. I'll, I'll tell you right now, after a knife edge chop like that, I would give up. I'd be done. But I'm, I'm a stand up comedian when I'm not in my wheelchair, not a professional wrestler. Ouch. Hello. It's nice to meet you. Good night. Wow, these two guys. Ow, ow. Physical, Why? Physical matchup here. 
They've all been physical, but this one just has an extra nastiness. Did you see the snap added to that suplex, Mark? Did you see the snap added by Reed? Scott Reed going. Scott Reed with a couple of feet to the chest of, and he's going to go for a pin here. One, two, oh, not I, even. Just a one count. I, I already like this matchup, man. I already like it. I didn't know what to think on paper, but I like it now. Scott Reed's bringing a, a, a certain, a certain, uh, vindictiveness to the table and Sammy Callahan is just mean and ugly man. I tell you what Tiny all you got to do is look at the facial expressions of these two guys here. These guys are crazy. These guys are hungry. These guys want to yeah. fight. These guys want the cup. They want the cup. They want to advance to the finals and both of them like you said a few splinters short of a full wood plank. How do you like that? I took a cliche. I kind of made it my own. How about a few fries short of a Happy Meal? Uh, I've heard that before. That's kind of crappy. <laughs> Oh, don't give me the phony broadcasting laugh. Oh, come on. Sammy Callahan up on his feet again. Scott Reed. And Callahan, notice. Another feet. He's working. He's going to start working on the left. Oh, God. Headbutt. Dang it. This guy's all over the place. Man, neither of these guys seem to be phasing each other. And, and, and you see Callahan trying to keep that distance, trying to push back Scott Reed so he can get off some off. Against the ropes. Who? A little showboating and then a big, big elbow. Far leg hooked. Near fall there. I don't know. Maybe Reed got a little zealous there when he tried to do a little showboat in there and well, he missed the fall. Callahan now in the corner. Scott Reed is gonna gonna bring a special delivery right to him. Oh, God. He goes head first in the turnbuckle. Callahan with a kick to the head. Callahan, what? Again, I don't even know what, what was that. There. Here comes the pin. One, two, and oh, just a two count there. Callahan not happy there. He wanted that three count. He wanted to advance, but Reed was not ready to give up. Reed was not having it, and you can't blame him. Reed as a, a, a making his MCW debut here tonight knows the meaning, knows the opportunity that has been laid at his feet to, to compete in the finals of the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup. Beautiful, beautiful pump kick. Here comes a pin, one, two, and another near fall there. You, you gotta call these falls, man. I, I can't do it, I can't do it. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm either gonna have a conniption, a heart attack, or by the end of this be, be looking like Michael J. Fox on an edge sketch. Hot <laughs> Reed has Callahan up, that was good. Callahan up on his shoulders. What's he gonna do here? Yowzers, good night, one, two. Another two count, you know, I'm gonna keep, I, I keep trying to give myself a space between two and three because these pinfalls are so close. Well, I'm going to say three, and it's only going to be a two count. Here's something to put into your brain here, uh, Mark. The the look, look at the intensity that these guys are competing. A, a normal athlete, and I'd like I'd say this on a normal evening, may just lay down for that that maneuver, may have enough. But because this is the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup, they're pulling out that extra inch, that extra mile to go to those finals and a unique and looking on a submission move here will scott reed tap out callahan wants it scott reed still trying to hold on was that a tap that's, that's a, a tap. tap that's a tap sammy callahan going to the finals of the switchblade conspiracy the rock band no the tag team <laughs> Finals of the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup just got even more interesting. We're just gonna keep the ball rolling here, Tiny Tim. It doesn't get any better than Maryland Championship Wrestling. Joe E. Tell calls himself indestructible. That remains to be seen. These qualifying matches for the Shamrock Cup are... Oh, hold on. He has something to say. Of course he does.
again, indestructible. The cup's gonna say Joey Tell. This guy's kind of get ahead of himself a little bit. I have a little bit. Joey Tell, a little, a uh, little too confident, pacing in the ring here, waiting for his opponent. Is that, is that who I think it is? Well, the fans are, is that Teddy Stigma, the former tag team partner of our MCW Heavyweight Champ? Is that Teddy Stigma? Mark, what the hell are you saying? He looks like uh, looks like Joey Tell may have spoken a little too soon here. He's got one heck of an opponent. Uh, let me pose this to you. What would happen if Teddy Stigma advances to the finals? What would happen because the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup is an elimination matchup? What would happen if the game down Teddy Stigma? And our current heavyweight champ, Ryan McBride. I think they would go for it. I think they would. I think you got I think to. They would compete. You got to, but a uh, drawing the line in the sand right there. Scroll of us, uh, Joe Attell. Attell is <laughs> no, I, making any friends here in uh, the green room in Dundalk, Maryland. Well, I already don't like him. Teddy Stigma with a clear size advantage in this one. Hey, it looks like. Uh, he looks like a, a Jersey Shore reject to me. He looks like a, a real, a real douche nozzle. Forgive my language there. I just something about him. He already rubs me the wrong way. And stigma doesn't seem to sweat him too much either. It's like competing for 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 uh, for reactions here. I mean, this place has gotten so loud already, and, and we're still in the qualifying matches. Crowned a new MCW Heavyweight Champ, we Ryan McBride, who still has to compete later. Innovator of violence, Tommy Dreamer, already made his presence felt. And tonight, tonight we already know two finalists: Rich Swan, Sammy Callahan, who's going to advance now. There, Stigma gets back up to his feet. Joey Tell in the corner, asking for time. Like he's gonna get like the referee's gonna call time out here let's let's run down let's run down what we got at the moment right now in the finals three competitors mr. standing 450 rich swan Sammy Callahan formerly of the uh, switchblade conspiracy and our new MCW heavyweight champion Ryan McBride Teddy stigma looking to, and Joe Attell looking to advance hold on thought that was a cover there it was not looking to add their names to the prestigious past of this tournament names like Chris Christian York, who won the initial one in 1999. Uh, Keenan Creed was, was the first Shamrock Cup that I was present for. As a student of the game, as a student at Bonebreakers, I watched Keenan Creed win the second annual Shamrock Cup. Joey Matthews, Joey Mercury of the Straight Edge Society, formerly of Eminem, a former winner. Tom Reckless Youth Carter, uh, Ruckus, God dang, Josh Daniels, Derek Frazier, Brian McBride last year's winner, and those guys want to add their name. I'm sorry I'm long-winded. I'm out of breath now. Go ahead. Thought there, uh, Tiny. It looks like Joey Tell's trying to get outside for a breather in the ring, but Stigma's not going to have it. He's going to chase him back into the ring. Well, there's only Joey one thing Tell to do. <laughs> misses and lands straight on his uh, derriere there. Derriere. Stigma on the outside, on the inside, going for the quick pin, too, and I he doesn't get it. I think this Joe Attell is kind of an idiot, man. He's, 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 he's giving chase, but then he's missing his opportunity to take advantage of the bigger man. And just as I said that, he does something that makes me makes me a little bit of a fan of his. He takes the low road, which is smart, which you got to do. How, 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 what, would you, uh, what would you flag to, uh, Teddy Stigma in at, at height-wise? 
Oh gosh, if I was gonna look at him right now, he's at least six three, six four. Six three, six four. Eight. So you gotta take him off. Gotta take him off that vertical base. Gotta bring the guy not down to your level to a lower level. Joe Tell's doing that right now. Let's see if he can make a fan out of the pimp with the limp. I don't know. Well, I tell you what, I'm not a big fan of this Joey Tell character. Seems to be a little arrogant. A little. Ouch. And Teddy Stigma is going to slap the arrogance right out of him. Has him in the corner there. Joey Tell with the reversal and the kick to yeah. the gut. I don't care how big you are, how tough you are. If you get kicked right in the baby maker, brother, that, that, that's enough to, uh, to take the wind right out of you. Well, I think it was a little higher than the baby maker. Let's give our officials a little more credit than that. And Teddy Sigma with the huge clothesline. Now the back of the elbow there. Joey Tell, I don't even know how he keeps getting up. I don't know how Ryan, uh, excuse me, Teddy Stigma with that agility and his size. Look at the far leg. And just a two count there. And this is a, I'm sorry to cut you off, Mark, but this is a delicate process competing in this tournament. It's a different kind of conditioning because you have to know that if you're going to be successful, you're going to be competing more than one occasion here this evening. Even though, even last year's winner, who, who usually gets a bye, already had probably the match of his life, the moment of his life, when he won the MCW Heavyweight title. It's an even playing field tonight in the Shane Shamrock Memorial Finals added impact by the likes of Teddy Stigma. Here comes the pin, one, two, and almost, but Joe E. Tell is able to kick out there. Teddy Stigma is gonna have to get back on his feet and make something happen again here. Joey, Joey Tell with a low blow to the ribs. He's been working on that section of uh, stigma here for a while. And to the throat there as well. Joey Tell. Wow! Holy like a lawn dart spiked in the center of that ring. If Joey Tell can roll over, he will advance undoubtedly. Joey Tell trying to make his way over to Teddy Stigma. See if he can get the pin here. Count it, ref! Two. For crap's sake! And, and Joe Attell may have been a little cheated there. I'm sorry, man. I got to call it like I see it. Oh, got to give these refs a little more credit than that, Tiny Tim. I don't mean to undermine our officials here, but... And that's a discretionary call. He's closer to the action than I am. And there's the height. There's the power. Looks like a move of desperation on the point of uh, Teddy Stigma there. He misses with the leg. Joey Tell again to the midsection with a boot. Uh, it looks What's like he's gonna try here. Trying to take a page out of uh, out of Teddy Stigma's book with that standing and oh, float over. Okay. Stigma puts Joey Tell on the top rope. Tell's nipple just landed on our table. I think you can have that. Stigma down. Joey Tell up to the top rope. A little high fly. Ooh. He misses. Man. Oh, what a boot big boot! Face. Is he gonna get the pin here? One, two, three, and wow, just like that, things get interesting. We're just going to keep that ball rolling here in MCW's Shamrock Cup 10 for another qualifying match. And who do we got here? This man is my odds on favorite on paper to win the 10th annual Shane, Sh excuse me, not annual, the 10th Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup. You see him staring at it. I know Tommaso Ciampa very well. I spent time in OVW in Louisville, Kentucky. This is a guy that came up through the developmental system. He was almost too controversial, almost too intense for the, 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 the landscape there in World Wrestling Entertainment. He got the boot. You know what he did? He didn't. Damn it, Larry. Tommaso 
also didn't pack his bags and say, well, I got to the top of the mountain. I guess I'm going to get no higher. No, he got knocked down. He got back up. He went to Harley Race. Harley Race, Hall of Famer, said, teach me, Harley. Show me the way. And Harley Race did just that. He has competed all over the nation. He will compete all over the globe before it's said and done. And he will undoubtedly be a WWE superstar before the fat lady sings on him. And tonight, put it on paper, my prediction, Tommaso Ciampa will be your 2010 Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup winner. Well, I'll tell you what, this is my first and time seeing this that's guy. that's a bold prediction. I've never, first time seeing this guy in competition, and I gotta tell you, the intensity in that guy's eyes just scared the crap out of me when he glanced over at the uh, booth over here. You know, I used to I used to joke around with him uh, with that Boston accent, say "clam chowder, chowder." I was the only one that could get away with it. I saw somebody else trying to do it. He knocked their teeth out. Bobby Shields, a competitor, no stranger to the Northeast wrestling scene, has competed for Ring of Honor, now makes his Maryland Championship Wrestling debut. Tommaso, to the best of my knowledge, never competed here in MCW, and it's funny how in this industry things come full circle, man. You, you see you see people coming up, you run into them on the way, somewhere between the, the money or lack thereof and the miles, there's no shortage of that. You run into the same people, and that's what I'm talking about on Tommaso Ciampa. Just nasty ugliness. Well, Tommaso Ciampa didn't even want to wait for the bell here. He's taking this fight outside. Bobby Shields is a little dazed right now. He was getting his boots checked by the ref, and and Tommaso yeah. didn't even he didn't even want to wait. No, no, taking the fight right to the outside early on in this matchup. And you don't wait, Mark. You don't wait. This is the tenth Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup. You don't wait for the boots to be checked. If there's an opportunity, you take it. And guess what? Guess what? That opportunity was just taken here by Bobby Shields. Bobby Shields trying to make a little aerial move to the outside and he takes out Tommaso. Tommaso Ciampa. Tommaso Ciampa is, uh, I don't know, I can, can you see it from here? It looks... Uh, you know, we we, we talked a little bit about the different kind of uh, conditioning, the different kind of athleticism that comes with a tournament. you got to pace yourself. They say leave it all in the ring. Well, if you leave it all in the ring in that first matchup and you advance, what the hell do you got left for the finals, Mark? You're absolutely right. Tommaso is a guy. Ouch. Hello. Tommaso is a guy that has competed in tournaments. He has tournament condition. He got to the ECWA Super 8 Finals, only losing to former TNA star Consequences Creed. Came so close in what has been called a tremendous performance, what has been heralded by wrestling critics, which is hilarious. What has just been heralded as one of the finest matches of the year. Tommaso looking to keep that momentum going. That's why I say this guy is the odds on favor. You know, you For whatever it's worth, Mark. And it looks like finally this match is about to get into the ring. Tommaso Ciampa here taking Bobby Shields. Worked him out on the outside and is now going to try and bring that back into the ring here. Look at him lower the knee pad. Lower the knee pad. Holy smokes. That you, knee right to the face. That was flesh on flesh. Have you ever been hit in the face? Have you ever been punched in the face, Mark? I can honestly say I use my words to get out of fight. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tried to. Hold on. Cover. Imagine having an exposed kneecap driven at you by about, about 30 miles an hour running at you. Well, thankfully, I went the route of a broadcast journalist, and we don't do a lot of fighting in that uh, that that field. Tommaso utilizing a very unique submission maneuver, which takes away the left arm of Bobby Shields, so he can't fight out of it. And look for Tommaso. Tommaso isn't a guy that keeps keeps uh, 
Likes to have distance between him and his opponent. He likes to keep it close. Likes to keep it high impact. Likes to keep it raw, mean. And look at that, Bobby Shields. Shields won that battle right there with a the pin. One now. Oh my gosh. And a, we've just had near fall after near fall tonight. Now it looks like Bobby Shields going to get a go at it here. But Chiampo had something else to say. Chiampo, and a jawbreaker is a move that hurts you, man. When you do it, it hurts the top of your own head. That shows a little bit of the sadism out of Tommaso. Well, Ooh, and Bobby Shields hit the ground on that one. And that's Tommaso's gonna capitalize on that. That's why Tommaso's a young veteran. The guy's been competing since I think the age of 16, 17. He's a complete nutcase. And the longer he's in the business, the more he loses it. But the strange thing is, the more he loses it, the better he gets. Tommaso Ciampa seems to be uh, wasting a little time here. Might Ain't no such thing. Us. Ain't no such thing as waste the time with Tommaso. I don't think the guy's a precision. He's like an artist in there, man. He's like a. a he's a precision surgeon. He oh. dissects his opponents, and I think that's what we're seeing out of him. He ain't gonna give no breathing room to Bobby Shields unless he wants to. Case point evidence A right there, brother. I just say brother on the wrestling show. I did. Does I, that brother count one? I, that, yeah, I, you know what? There might have been actually a few more than that, but I wasn't really? kidding. Once again, Tommaso on his feet. Bobby Shields on the ground. That's happened a few times in this matchup. Probably more than Shields would like. Shields in the corner here, and the ref tries to break it. And then look at the more sadism out of Tommaso. Lowering that knee pad. Go for a knee strike in the corner. Good God, man. That is just sick, dude. That is sick. That is sick. And that hurts Tommaso's own knee. I know for a fact the guy has had reconstructive knee surgery. He's torn his ACL or his MCL. One of those two. One of and if that doesn't show you how twisted in the head this cat is, I don't know what does. And if that doesn't show you what the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup means to these competitors, I don't know what does. And Tell Chiampa. me what does, Mark. Chiampa trying to go for a submission move here. And chooses not to step over, too. Chooses not to step over it, with that clover leaf. Will I, Bobby Shields pass? That's prime real estate, Mark. That's prime real estate right in the middle of the ring. Absolutely. And you know, he doesn't have to put his, his follow through all the way because he can take that knee and stick it in the lower back of Bobby Shields. It's purely, purely on. Um, it's sadistic. The superstars. Absolutely. It's sadistic, man. Absolutely. Because he probably could have gotten the submission there, but he let him out of it just to inflict more punishment. What is that, Bobby? Bobby, Bobby. Seals has had enough, it looks like. Well, he has he? to the face. I, the if I'm answers right back. If I'm Bobby Shields, Shields, I had going to... back and forth here, forearm to forearm, chop to chop, right in the center of the ring. These guys are both competitors. These guys are the best. That's why they are here tonight. And, and you see Bobby Shields reeling a little bit more than Tommaso on that offense. Tommaso, oh, wow! Well, that's what you call a game changer. A shuffle sidekick right to the throat of Chiampa. And then a boot to the face. Chiampa might be in trouble here. Ouch! Tomasa on the back. Go for a pin. One, two. Oh, and almost three there, but not quite enough. A version of a Mishinoku driver there out of the suplex wasn't enough to take Bobby Shields to the promised land of the finals of the Shane Shamrock Memorial Bobby Cup. Bobby Shields to the second level, and he comes down hard with the well, shins right in the chest of Tommaso. Didn't get it all there. That was all shins on Tommaso. But is it enough to keep down Chiapa? Is it enough to kind of, kind of open the window? For Bobby Shields to advance to the finals, not if Tommaso has anything to say about it. Tommaso going to go up to the second rope and try and counter it. He's on top. He's what the hell is this? I have no idea what's going on here. And oh. holy smokes, that's got to be it. But no, what's this? Are you kidding? Tommaso Chiampa done. is keeping chiropractors nationwide in business. You gotta be kidding me! What the? Heck? And Bobby Shields is trying to. Whoa! It didn't happen. That that's a power bomb. Two, three, and that is your odds-on favorite for the Shamrock Cup.
I like a good shove it up your you know what story. And Tommaso Ciampa to me is a good shove it up your you know what story. He's been kicked out of every place he's ever been. And now, finally, he may get his doing proper if he becomes the 2010 Shamrock Cup winner, which is my prediction. We're about to get things started here, and this qualifying match is a little bit different than the other one. So that you just heard our ring announcer, it's going to be the best tag team around. Nothing's going to happen. Keep you down. That You're music the best can only mean one thing. Around. Oh, um, the rules, right? I got a little caught up. I like the song. Um, tag team match. Whoever gets the pinfall advances. That's right. Well, uh, we've, we've almost used the word interesting ad nauseum here tonight, but this is interesting. I don't know what else you can say. Intriguing? Give me a freaking thesaurus. I don't know, man, because you got a tag team matchup where the, the, the guy who scores the pinfall advances. Absolutely. So does that not make for dissension in the ranks, Bart? You know what, you gotta think that that's probably gonna, gonna be the case here. I mean, these two guys go together like, you know, you know peas and carrots, white on rice, but these guys, only one of them can score the win and only one of them can move on. Syrup and waffles, who goes first? Who goes to the finals, the syrup or the waffles? You like that? That was kind of weak sauce. That was. It's been a long time. And hey, wait a minute, I uh... Well this looks like half of the uh, SATs well, here. I, I was expecting to see Joel and Jose. And, and maybe, maybe your notes are different than mine here. I had assumed we were going to see the SAT here at MCW and and, and, uh, and vie for a final position. I'm a little confused myself. Well, that's not tough to do, but... And it looks like uh, the best around's a little confused, too, and has something to say. J. Cannon's got something here. Where's your brother? He ain't got a movie. I don't know where he is. In case you didn't know where Joe Massimo is. We don't. He found out he was working the best around. He working? He found himself a total group up. Went back to Mexico and retired. Oh, come on. That's not called for. Ain't nobody working. Nobody, man. This is wrestling. Well, that's a. Uh, this is highly irregular, but. That's a Beezalzy statement right there. Taking on the best around, two on one action. And I guess you, you can't question that because guess what now? Jose doesn't have to compete with the tag team partner. That's one last guy that he uh, he could possibly not get in there. Okay, now look that's at that. That's a little fruity. Best around doing a little, uh, little funny business to get ready here. It looks like picture perfect Bruce Maxwell is going to get the start up here. Joel over here is he's ready to compete. I, I I was all ready for a tag team matchup, but it looks like it's gonna be a two-on-one beatdown. Yeah, Maximo and, and is being pretty much the lamb being led to slaughter at the hands of the wolves. Unless he can use that speed. The best around call themselves the best around, but they don't have a smidgen of experience when it comes to comparison on Joe. But it may it may make no difference if it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game, plain and simple. But you know what, Tiny Tim? Even though it is a numbers game, well, only one of those two guys can win. So eventually, it's going to have to come down to you know 
Exactly. Who's it going to be? And you got to wonder. They've had preparation for this. They knew they had a tag team match. Did they talk and did they did they talk it over? Did they say, "All right, TJ, I want you in the finals." Or, "All right, Bruce, you're more capable to hang with the big boys. Maybe you can go to the finals." Do you know? Do you have an answer? You're a broadcast journalist. Well, Did you do I, your I, research? I Did you get questions? Sit here and, and, and find out like the rest of them. Is it? Is he good? Maybe Bruce and TJ both up on top here. Are I thought it was uh, looking for the Spanish fly on Maximo. The Spanish but, fly. Well, that's the name of the SAT's finishing maneuver. If you've been here for more than a cup of coffee, bro, you might know that. Beautiful. I'm just busting I'm just chops here. Pretend I didn't hear that and go on with the match here. Maximo is trying to take control here. He's got TJ Cano oh, and Maximo. Maximo just took a shot to the face. Maximo is doing a great job of making sure he knows where both of the competitors, both tag team partners of best around are at all times. And, and you took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, he, he's doing, look at that, look at that, play and catch up. Genius maneuver on the part of Maximo. Uh, well, just when he gets that momentum going, I think that's when the numbers game shuts you, know you down, what? Mark. You know what they call him? He calls himself picture perfect, and I got to admit, that move was pretty picture perfect there. He's going to go for a pin here, and it's only a two count. Maybe, just maybe, Maximo picked off a little more than he can chew here. The best around, trying to live up to their namesake here. And finally, the Bruce official Maximo on the inside. Finally, the official gets a little uh, order, law and order. And just when I say that, I thought we were going to get quick tags in and out. Where's the law and order? Where's the continuity? Well, the part of the officiating. It's like a shooting cannon. Going for a pin here. And, and interestingly enough, there's no dissension thus far. Did you fart? What is, uh, what's that, that noise? Me. I have no idea what's going on. I, I, I have no idea. There's no scheduled music to be here. That sounds a little familiar to me. Oh, Maximus. Well, do I know that here I am. Holy I God! Jesus H. Christ! That is Christian York! Christian York, the winner of the very first Shamrock Memorial Cup, making his way to ringside. Folks, we told you it couldn't get any crazier tonight, but just like that. We should stop telling them that. I, I, I have nothing in my notes. I, have, I know I that no music. What's going on here? That's the music that Christian York and Joey Matthews used to come out to. That's the music that used to play when he became the first ever two-time Shamrock Cup winner. That's the music that played when he became MCW Tag Champ, when he became MCW Heavyweight Champ. And now it looks like, it looks like he's in the matchup. It looks like he's, you're right, it looks like he's coming out here to take on the empty spot for Maximo and be his tag team partner. Looks like things just changed a little bit. The scales might be balanced here. TJ Cannon and Bruce Maxwell are gonna have their hands full now. And this is so cool to be a part of this, oh, man. Wow. I, I, my, my, my voice is almost gone. Ooh, Bruce Maxwell getting a little uh, if I if I can there. if I can credit anybody for for any 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 type of involvement or minimal success I've had in professional wrestling, it's the likes of Joey Mercury. It's the likes of somebody we're going to see compete a little later, former diva Mickey James. Oh, she's always going to be a diva, Mickey James. Always a diva. And 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 Christian York. And it's so cool to me that this is where I started to be a part of history, to be a part of the 10th Chain Shamrock Memorial Cup. Here comes the tag. Maximo was unable to make it over to his partner, and now it looks like you know TJ can here is gonna gonna work on Maximo here and you know what they have to keep him they have to keep doing what they're doing here they have to keep him from making that tag you are Chris so right is lateral press Chris whoa, 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 whoa. Is from the outside exactly but did you see that did you catch that uh, is that TJ or is that Bruce in the ring right now. TJ's in the ring right now. TJ, did you see him going for that cover there? Bruce made his way in to break it up a little bit, it looked like. I may have gotten it all wrong. It may have been a miscommunication, but that's what it looked like to me. You know what? That would make sense because once again, a old cover. Old man, here comes a cover. Well, I think I got it right. 
Only one man can advance. There seems well, to be one. Well, only one legal man. There Come on, refs. There seems to be a little dissension in the best around here. I think they're finally getting it through their Canadian heads that only one of them can go on. Don't insult our Canadian fans. What's wrong with you? Ouch! Correction, I said their Canadian head. Oh, oh. Fair enough. Tag in to the only man who has ever done a repeat and won wow. the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup twice, 1999 and 2003. Christian York is a staple in the Maryland Championship Wrestling team. If there were a Hall of Fame, Christian York would have his own wing. And it looks like picture perfect Bruce Mack. Whoops. He's gonna, gonna get a little bit more than he bargained for here in this. Ah. Christian York going for the pin. Open an air leg. Two. Whoa. And York almost advanced into the finals there, Mark. Now remember, Christian York is the freshest man in this matchup, so you got to think that the odds are in his favor right now. Bruce Maxwell trying. Wow. wow. You know what? I can't even keep up with you. Beautiful. These guys are doing beautiful fireman's two. carry. Oh, if there, if there wasn't any dissension before, I think it's there now. And Christian's just a big old country boy, man. We call him Catfish Hunter because he's big, he's bad, and he has high impact offense. Absolutely. Best around learning that firsthand. Look at this. Well, oh. you know what? Maximo and Christian aren't a well-oiled machine. Maximo didn't even know he was going to be competing with Christian here tonight. And TJ Cannon on the outside. Right. Oh. Christian York against... Wow, Christian York throws TJ Cannon up against the ring, leaving Maximo and Bruce Maxwell as the legal men in this matchup. The corner of that apron is one of the hardest parts of a professional wrestling ring. Nothing hurts more than that. Maxwell goes for the kick, it's tied up on the ropes. Christian, hold on, Christian. I think that was a tag. Maximo going for the Spanish fly. Christian, I think, just made that tag. Bruce Maxwell. Which makes him Bravo. the legal man. Keep your eye on Christian. Christian from the top rope, going down with a fox breath. One, two, three. Holy mother of God, Christian York advances in the Shamrock Cup. And now things got dangerous. Christian's a guy who's already made history. He's already won twice. Can it be a three-peat for the former MCW Heavyweight Champ, Christian York, here tonight on what's already been a historic evening at the 2010 Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup. special attraction if there ever was one here at the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup we got not only fed up but two local columnists two journalists at the Baltimore Sun duking it out yeah you better believe that I've been to this one for a while here. I mean, you've got fed up the obnoxious tag team. I'll put that out there right now. And and Baltimore Sun, like you said, Baltimore Sun, this guy, this guy hates wrestling. This guy can't, I, I don't even know why they let him in the building, to be honest with you, Tiny Tim. Well, I got a question. Not only does he hate wrestling, this big schmuck, but he hates Dundalk. So what the hell are you doing in a wrestling ring in Dundalk, Mark? That's my question. That's why I'm throwing your papers around. Oh, God. Here we go again. I'll translate for you. Now I know that everybody came to MCW 
Everybody's here to see Fed Up, they're said. I, I got that part. Be quiet. Thanks for the translation. No problem. They're going to leave if the people don't stop uh, making noise. They're going to exit in a prompt fashion. Uh, you don't have to. Is that his real? I think I oh, okay. <laughs> Schmuck is his name? Money. He paid them to tag with him, Mark. I, Why did we continue to give them a mic every time they're here? Got mashed potatoes in his mouth. I have no idea what he said. Shameless plug. www.youtube.com slash tiny tim limpin nice wow these these fans do not like fed up and neither do i quite frankly i don't know i think his name fits don't you Like, and what do you expect the reaction to be? Schmuck has been. Oh, will you shut up, Schmuck? He has been trashing Dundalk for months now, trashing this great business known as professional wrestling for months now. And there's a man that's standing up for it. That man has paid homage to this business in a better way than most columnists I've ever seen. And his name's Kevin X. He's gonna be out here in a few minutes. Absolutely. Moments, hopefully seconds if we're lucky. And here comes the opponents of Fed Up and Mr. Schmuck of the Baltimore Sun. And that music could only mean one person. What, that Larry uh, Larry Legend's getting lucky? The, <laughs> the flamboyant, the always flaming. Did I say that on TV? You did. <laughs> I did. It's okay. Cole Calloway. I, I got no bones to pick up. Well, maybe a bad word to use in this. has a bone to pick. But let's get to the meat of the matter. Uh, these guys don't suck. Uh, these are all bad. You know what? Bad. Maybe I'll take it from here. Yeah, why don't you? Call Callaway, Roddy Zugo, these two guys seem like an odd couple as a team, but at the end of the day, they get the job done. 
and of course the their job. addition here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kevin X. Uh, uh, keep in mind, I, I remember reading a, uh, a column that Kevin wrote on the late great Eddie Guerrero after his uh, his passing. WWE Hall of Famer. It's one of the most beautiful pieces I've ever read, written about professional wrestling. The guy has. He, he's not only a lifelong fan of of what these guys do, of the uh, of how they perform, how they compete. But he has he just has an unlimited respect and it shows. Nobody covers professional wrestling on the scale uh, that Kevin X does quite like him in the Baltimore Sun. The schmuck. It may be dinner for schmucks for schmuck. And he may be the main course here if Kevin X gets his hand on him. I just think that uh that singlet's pretty interesting. Uh, I don't know if I would have gone with that. Well, here's here. Well, we're gonna get it interesting right off right off the bat. We're gonna have the battle of the vloggers here. Yeah, we're gonna have Kevin Eck. We're gonna have Peter Schmuck, and they're gonna start this match up. Did Schmuck show up for a volleyball tournament, or does he show up for a wrestling match? <laughs> And actually, Kevin Eck looks looks pretty darn good for a newspaper columnist. Well, Cole Calloway seems to think so. As the uh, view over here. And it looks like Schmuck is going to try and shake the hands of... Oh, Whoa, Al! That'll pop an eardrum. That guy's obviously... Obviously uh, been taking some lessons from Fed Up and Cheap Shots. Oh, come on. The ref is holding Kevin Eck back. Well, you can hate, you can hate Fed Up, and that's fine. And you can question the uh, alternative lifestyle of Cole Calloway. And even if you're not a fan of Ronnie Zuko, which I am, I, I, I th Ronnie's a great guy, awesome competitor, one of the most underrated guys in the sport. You got to admit that Schmuck and Eck brought some serious heavy hitters to the game here tonight to be in their corner. Absolutely, and this matchup is underway. Ronnie Zuko taking control early on G on G Fed here. G Fed. G Fed, the larger of the Fed Up tag team. And here comes a quick tag to Cole Calloway. Cole Calloway making his in-ring debut in this match. Well, first time we've seen Calloway in this, and. Uh, <laughs> cheap shot by well, Fed. Here comes is there, Steve Fed. Is there any other shot from Fed Up? Cover. Ooh, near fall there. That would have been a short night. Callaway's got C Fed, but C Fed has got some uh, something to say about it. He's trying to work on the midsection. Callaway against the ropes. C Fed down on the map. Cole Callaway is going to try and make something going here against the ropes. Well, and the trip there. Hey, here comes a pin. One, two. And just a two count, Cole Calloway is going to try his hand at a pin, two. Nice little sequence there, trying to, uh, both men trying to get that quick pinfall. Just like that, CFED is out of the ring with Cole Calloway. But you got a hard concrete floor. You got to think what's going through the head of the columnist here on the Baltimore side. You know Eck wants to get his hands on Schmuck, so he wants this match to go on. But you got to think Schmuck wants this one over quick. He wants Fed Up to fight his battle for him. Of so course. he can get his bags, pack him, and get under out of Dundalk before they rip him and eat him alive here. No pun intended for Cole Calloway in the kick. eating part. There's a drop kick to C-Fed here. Cole Calloway using a little bit of his mind games to work on C-Fed. Here comes the tag. Kevin Eck of the Baltimore Sun is now inside the ring. Is that what we're calling blatant uh, homoeroticism mind games? Well, uh, you can call it what you will, but I'm going to call it that. Okay, fair Again, enough. I am a journalist, sir. Kevin Eck in a little bit of trouble here. Yeah, he uh, may have bitten off a little more than he could chew. To say the least, I mean, there, there, there's a difference between uh, meeting your deadline on Monday morning with a, uh, a, a knockdown drag him out column and competing in a knockdown drag him out match. And right now, Kevin Eck is learning that difference. Absolutely. Here comes G Fed. G Fed with the tag. Oh, schmuck there getting. Uh, a schmuck's up. a schmuck. You got to cheat behind the ref's back, dummy. And Peter Schmuck has shown. On more than one occasion, his disdain for this area of Dundalk and the business that is being done yeah. in that ring right there. Well, that's why I'm pulling for Kevin Nack here, man. Come on, Kev. Well, would you pull for anybody against Fed Up? Uh, well, as long as Cole Calloway ain't pulling nobody, that's what matters. And Peter Schmuck, an illegal chokehold with the bottom rope there behind the ref's back. Kevin Eck is hurting. 
It's is a good thing he's not a broadcast journalist. He just types because he might not be able to speak tomorrow. That's true. That's true. Looking for that elbow. Let's not forget Candy at ringside. An MCW original back in the corner of the guy that brought her to the dance. Her boyfriend's back, Ronnie Zuko. Look at Zuko looking for that single leg. Got him up. Shades of the great Fit Finley on that roll through Fire Ends Carry. Well, well, hello. Well, I hope I hope Cole Calloway didn't teach him that move behind closed doors. Cole Calloway seems to be enjoying this a little bit. Ronnie Zuko in full control over here as he goes to work again on G Fed here with a right hand to the face. G Fed up against the ropes. And a slap to the chest. We could hear that all the way back here. And Zuko, you know, you can say uh, the guy likes to have fun in there. Oh, schmuck, you may live the regret that. that. Or you may not. You can say what you want about Zuko, but the guy's a bringer, man. He's He's been an up-and-comer here in MCW. Been here for oh, man, there's a better part of teamwork there. Beautiful continuity. Better part of 10 years. And he's a scrappy, scrappy dude. Knows how to throw down. But it may not matter. Again, the numbers game, the continuity on the part of Fed Up may be coming into play here and may wear down Ronnie Zuko. A nasty Russian leg sweep there. Ronnie Zuko's maybe in a little bit of trouble here. Man, interesting, uh, interesting, interesting segue from the from the offensive maneuver that Russian leg sweep into a submission maneuver, and that wasn't meant to win. That wasn't meant to win. That was meant to inflict punishment, or perhaps a setup for Peter Schmuck here. Oh God! Look at those knee pads. He looks like a painter, for God's sake. I feel like he's like gonna pull out the. Uh, the sack and getting a three-legged race with his son. He's like the creepy uncle. You kidding me? He looks like my dad on a Saturday morning watching college football <laughs> on the couch. Yeah, well, I, I agree with everything on his shirt except the last word. <laughs> Big schm ew. I, I'm with Candy on that. I think she just threw up a little bit in her mouth. I think I just threw up a little bit in my mouth as well. Peter Smuck, as soon as Ronnie Zuko shows signs of life, yeah. he goes for the quick tag there. Well, you know, you, you got to duck and cover. The guy's a journalist. He's It's like you and I being in there with professional wrestlers, except we're in the business. We know what to expect. I don't think these guys do. I think maybe Kevin X a little more prepared and a lateral yeah. press. I think you and I know enough to stay out of the ring and yeah, yeah. those guys. Exactly. Exactly, buddy. Although, uh, you know, Kevin Eck over there again, he looks like a, the, the real McCoy. Uh, Ronnie Zuko's in trouble. Kevin Eck obviously tailored and bedazzled his high school wrestling singlet to compete in this matchup. And let's see if it comes into play. He's obviously in the better shape of the two non-wrestling competitors. And whether they like it or not, they signed on the dotted line. This match is happening. It's going down. And C-Fed using their trade. Sun Sun is a, is, a, is a term of endearment. Ah, I'm sure it is. Perhaps where you're from, but not me. Where I'm from, Sun Sun just means annoying. <laughs> just means annoying? Wow, oh, yo, man! Close line there. Talk about having the same... Guys. Yeah, talk about having the same thought, man. They just jinxed each other offensively. Both going for that clothesline. Both eating it. Candy trying to trying to rally something in her in her man there as Cole Calloway comes in for the tag. Cole Calloway on C Fed and G Fed. Now back again on G Fed. G Fed in the corner. Cole Calloway trying to give him a mouthful, I mean a handful. Oh, beautiful Bulldog. You know, a lot of people look at the way Cole Calloway carries himself and look at his outfit and his ring attire and they don't take him seriously, but this guy is a fierce competitor and a veteran of MCW. <laughs> wow. Beautiful, beautiful super kick on the part of Ronnie Zuko. The guy is deceptively athletic. It's amazing you can get your leg up that far in jeans like that. I know I sure that, that's what That's what Calloway said about you. <laughs> wow. Wow, really? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Oh, no, a cheap it's okay. Shot. It was a cheap shot. And That's Ronnie oh. Zuko! Never does that guy fly! That's what the Shamrock Cup's about. Pulling out the stops. You know what? I don't think I've ever seen Ronnie Zuko do something like that. That was impressive. Cole Calloway and Kevin Eck trying to rally support. Calloway over the top. Up, oh, well. 
Keep your eye on Nick. Oh, and look at this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Kevin Eck takes Peter Schmuck. Uh, and well, looks like it's just Jan a more sun battle. Oh. Like by Peter Schmuck on Kevin Eck. And you can only think, you got to think this may be the only part in the match where Cole Calloway's envious of Schmuck. You know what? I take it back. Remember how I said Peter Schmuck looked like my dad sitting on the couch watching football? Yeah. Correction. He looks like my dad mowing the grass. The guy's got a this? he's got a laptop he out. Logging? He's got a laptop out. Perhaps he's trying to keep count of how many homosexual references I can make in one matchup. As as oh. Kevin Eck looking to John Candy to the rescue. Girl. And, and Kevin Eck channeling, channeling the, the idols, the superstars of yesteryear. He may never get this opportunity again. He ain't going to get it on Monday, but he gets it here tonight. Oh. Uh, EKO, EKO. One, two, three. And Kevin Eck wins the battle of the bloggers, the team of Kevin Eck. water cooler talk is going to be on Monday at the Baltimore Sun. It's going to be how rated ECK Kevin Eck just kicked and stuffed the words of that schmuck down his own throat. Dundalk reigns supreme. ECK reigns supreme. Professional wrestling reigns supreme. Hold on, let me get it in, let me get it in. Ho! Oh! Hey, Ramblin' Rich, Earl the Pearl, these are two guys. When I was growing up in Baltimore, used to go down to Bingo Billies and watch these guys compete when I was 11 years old. And guess what? You may say, well, Tiny, don't make them feel old. Forget that. They're here competing for the MCW Tag Team Championships, and they still got it. That's right. They're going to be able to compete in this fatal four-way tag team match for the MCW, MCW tag titles, just like you said. But let's meet their opponents here. Fatal four-way, fatal four-way rules means first pinfall or submission wins you the tag team championship. Means not elimination. Means the champions do not have to be pinned. That's right. And here comes the first of their three opponents, the Harbor City Hit Squad, Drolix and Kendricks. These guys are two scary individuals. Well, you may be scared. I'm a little scared. Never mind. I, uh, I know for a fact, you know, it's one of those matches does not favor the champion. Usually a championship match, champion is always the favorite. However, in this matchup, the champions do not have to be pinned to lose the titles. They can have one of the challengers give in another challenger, and we'll have new champions. Risky, risky business for the MCW Tag Champs. And look at that. Kendrick's wasting no time. Doing it is doing what he does, and frankly, that's disgusting. Yeah, that's all gross. Well, 
on a night where we're going to see in the finals of the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup an elimination style, meaning we start off with six competitors. It's going to come down to two. Ultimately, the last man standing is going to be your 2010 Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup winner. Here we see a matchup. Very interesting. Like I said, first pinfall or submission takes you to the promised land, takes you to Tag Team Championship gold. I'm going to wait till we get all four teams out here, and then I'm going to ask you to call it, Mark. I'm going to call you out, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you run the gamut, so to speak. I want to know who you think is taking home the tag team titles here tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll answer that in a few, but it could be these two guys right here, C.A. Elliott and Nui Tafiga. Well, Samoan Tsunami. Well, the Samoan Tsunami is my odds on favorite, I think. you got to give the experience to the Holy Rollers, undoubtedly, but Elliot and the Samoan Tsunami got the size advantage. Look, man, I, I, I've met plenty of Samoans in my day. I know a lot of Samoans, and all I can say is I'm just happy they're on my side. If I'm going to war, okay, if I'm going to war tomorrow and I'm recruiting an army, the first people I choose are the Samoan people. That music can mean only one thing. And what's that? The champions. Oh, of course. There come your MCW Tag Team Champions, Team Maxion. These guys come out month after month, show after show, and just thrill. These these guys, they're 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 like brothers. Well, in fact, they are brothers. They know what they're doing inside that ring. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I've heard a lot about Team Maxion. I've never seen them in action. Yeah, that was that was really bad. But I've never seen them in action. I've never seen them compete. I'm looking forward to this. I know the Holy Rollers like the back of my hand, man. I know the Harbor City Hit Squad. I know the Samoan Tsunami. Team Maxion, though, the tag team champs. My first time. Let's see if it's going to be a pleasure. And keep in mind, they're coming into this knowing that they are the underdogs. Different situation for the champs tonight. Absolutely. TJ and Kirby, Team Maxion, have to defend it against what looks like a Battle Royal inside the ring. Yeah. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the introduction, the following contest is scheduled for one fall for the MCW Tag Team Championships. Introducing first, team number one, weighing in the total by weight of 420 pounds. Definitely a hometown favorite. These guys have been around a long time. I'm giving my props. I just took my hat off to ETP and Ramblin' Rich, baby. Team number two, weighing in total by weight of 450 pounds, and Kelly from Jamaica, Queens, here on the country, Lou Charlie. Hit squad. Right. Second group of challengers. Uh, you got not quite. Samoa, the Samoan way, or the Samoan tsunami, and Elliot taking home those tag champs, ships, championships, championships. You take three.
team action holding up those beautiful MCW Tag Team Championship belts. Maybe, maybe for the last time. Quite possibly. I mean, if we're talking Vegas odds here, the odds aren't on the champs, man. They're not. They're just plain old simple are not. It's fatal four-way rules. First pinfall or submission, you take home the titles. So, so I'm calling you out, man. Who's your favorite? Team Maction, is it the Samoan Tsunami? And Elliot, is it the Holy Rollers or is it the Hit Squad? Well, I tell you what, any of these guys on any given day could win this. Obviously, I don't want to hear the safe with political... Experience, with experience, you got to give it to the Holy Rollers. But when you want hunger from a team who's never held the belts and they work together like a unit, you got to go with the Hit Squad. I'm going with the Hit Squad. I'm gonna make a bold. Uh, I'm gonna make a bold prediction here. I'm going with the Samoan Tsunami and Elliot. Granted, they're, they 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 may not be as well oiled of a tag team as others, but look at the size of the Samoan Tsunami. Always, always bet on Samoa. Absolutely, Nui Tafiga is gonna get the start in this one. ETP trying to fire away, trying to chop down that big tree that is the Samoan Tsunami. You can't compare a uh, tree to a wave. That's ridiculous. Earl the Pearl lost the battle of strength there. Nui Tafiga. You're going to lose that. Lower of the two. Oh! There he catches a clothesline right in the neck. Earl the Pearl is down. Yeah, I'm and sorry. I felt that on the floor back here. Yeah, and, and, and you, never, uh, you never want a Samoan head. There it is. Beautiful, Earl. The cover. You never won. Whoa. Maybe a little early in this matchup to try and put a pin on the Samoan Tsunami Nui Tafiga. And you try to keep the offense uh, away from the head of a Samoan. And you try to, to not get hit by the head of a Samoan. I, I've heard rumors it feels like having a bowling ball thrown at you. It's plain and simple. The Holy Rollers are getting the uh, brunt of Nui Tafiga's attack here. Or the pearls had enough. And the lava lava on uh, the Samoan Tsunami. There's the tag. C.A. Elliott is the legal man. C.A. Elliott's a pretty, pretty lucky competitor to be uh, competing Ouch. with the likes. Ouch! C.A. Elliott with the pin. One, two. Oh man, Ramblin' Rich. C.A. Elliott. Doesn't it sound like a, an author? Or? It does. It's a little like, like T.S. Elliott. That's what you're uh, thinking of. That would be it. But you're a broadcaster out here, man. I should. I be. was trying to make a joke, but apparently it went over your head. Well, that's not e that's not hard. I'm pretty short. Whoa! Beautiful flying knee lift. Shades of Harley Race. Look at the leg. Action getting their first appearance. And that's Kirby, correct? Kirby, TJ, you know, I'm pretty sure that's Kirby, but one of the advantages that Team Action has, they look alike. You're absolutely they right. Alike. They use that to their advantage, but I'm pretty sure that one's Kirby. Solid call there, Mark, because these two can, can kind of cheat the tag a little bit, man. Slip one over on the ref if they need to. Ah! Holy smokes! Why in the world? It's moves like that, it's things like that that make me wonder why in the world anybody a cover would want to be a professional wrestler. I think I think he broke him in half there. The near fall. C.A. Elliott in comp oh, Well, you know what? Here comes the hit squad for their first appearance. But you know what? You gotta think that was that was uh, that was Elliott's fault there, getting in the ring of the or getting in the corner of the hit yeah. squad. It's a, it's a lack of ring presence. It's kind of a uh, and the inexperience card coming into play. So Drolix of the Hit Squad and Kirby of Team Maction are the legal men in this match at this time. Here comes the pin. One, two, and it's a two count only. Drolix is not happy. And then he wanted a three count. The night is young still, Mark. I mean, we still have qualifying matches to come up for the finals of the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup. Not to mention the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup itself. Not to mention Tommy Dreamer. Not to mention Mickey James. That's right, Mickey James and Tommy Dreamer both seeing action later tonight. Kirby Mack trying to turn things around here. Drolix might be in a little bit of trouble here. Here comes the quick tag. TJ is now the legal man. You're gonna watch a little team action teamwork here that is the reason why they are the I've tag team champs. Wow, Face what? first into the mat. Drolix is hurt. How cool was that, man? Lateral press. 
And Kendricks comes in and makes the save. I finally, I just got it. Team action. Team action. I just got that. Wow. I am Welcome so, to um, the party. Welcome that, to the show. That's why they call me the short bus Superman. I, well, I seriously did just get that. But you know what? It, it's always good to feel enlightened. And yes, it is. For you. There's the continuity. But, and you can't teach Holy that, man. Smokes. Kendricks is seeing stars and now. That, 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 that's, that's a skill of coming out of the same womb. A cover. You can't teach that, man. Those guys are on the same page. I bet they finish each other's sentences. Absolutely. There's something, there's something to be said about blood relation in a tag team. It is because you grew up with the guy. You, you you fought him in your backyard. You know what I mean. You scrapped up in your backyard. You 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 fought the neighborhood bully together. Oh look at that! How innovative the cover. You see, hit the drop kick and and, and sequence almost seamlessly into a lateral press. You did see that, I right? I did see the tag. Hendricks is now the legal man. T.J. Mack may not have seen it, but I guarantee you he knows now. And he's sitting in the center of the ring. And frankly, Tiny Tim, he is hurting. Yeah, frankly, frankly, again, the understatement of the year cover. You saw Kendricks lift those legs, lift those knees upon impact. And, and, and that ring hurts, man. But you know what hurts worse? Human knees into your midsection. The head squad knows this. TJ Mack getting hit hard by Kendricks. Trollocs going for the pin. And look at this. You can tell the hit squad is hungry. They've never held the belts, and they want it bad. They've never held the titles. The Samoan, Samoan Tsunami has never held the titles. But there's a team in there. Oh, what a beautiful, what a, what a nasty, One, ugly clothesline. Two. The Holy Rollers multi-time MCW Tag Team Champions. Well, you know what, Tiny Tim? you got to think that perhaps Team Action and the Hit Squad are getting a little forgetful. They're working on each other. They're going back and forth in the ring, and they're letting those two guys, the veterans in the corner over there, the Holy Rollers breathe, and they're also letting the big men in the corner, Nui Tafiga and Elliot, C.A. Elliott take breather. Whoa. Holy moly! Yeah, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Talk about, they're, they're giving them time to pick their spot, so to speak. Absolutely. And just when I'm about to give up on you, Mark, you, you come out with a moment of brilliance. Well, you know what? Thank you. Here comes the tag. Again, these two guys, these two teams working on each other, yeah. allowing the other competitors to just look on. It's like they're doing the dirty work for them. Not, not the smartest move, but that's part of being young. You're overambitious, just like he was with that maneuver. Didn't get all of it. Absolutely. Kirby Mack, now the legal man with Kendricks. Team Maxson in the hit squad getting, getting their ample ring time. Draped over that middle rope. Oh! By the champ! What, what 619 times 2? Cover! Let me get out my calculator. Oh, you have one in your pocket. And here's the moment. We talked about picking your spot. Here's the moment that the Samoan Tsunami... Some, I can't even say that. It's like Samoan Tsunami and Elliot were waiting for, as were the Holy Rollers. So much action going on right now. I, I don't know where to look now. Oh my God, it's bedlam. Yeah, you, you got but seriously. On the floor. You got. You got. That was. That was funny. No, you, seriously though, the tag titles are on the line, and it's a wild card. So, right now, God knows who's taking the upper hand. Somebody better call BWI. Slow your roll, Tootsie Roll. Who are these two guys coming out here? There's a double neck breaker by the Holy Rollers, and we have yep. two men. Well, something's going on at ringside here, huh? Made their way to ringside. Egan on team action. I, I can't see through the, the sea of people here. There's just... I, I don't, frankly, I, I don't even know who the legal man is. I, I have no idea what's going on at ringside. We'll keep your eye on the action. Last time I saw this, the Glamazon Beth Phoenix did it to two men. And the Sun. God dang it, the Sun No and Sun. Whoa! What? 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 C.A. Elliott just turned on Nui Tafiga. Whoa, 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 whoa. That had to be a mistake, did it? That's a mistake, right? Earl the Pearl. That's no mistake at all! The Holy Rollers! Uh, what the hell just happened? Late Ladies and gentlemen, 
moment, what we just what we just saw this this this. Uh, uh, let me sum it up for you. You're at a loss of work. I'll tell you what happened. Those two guys that just came out took team action. The the, the champs eye off the prize. C. S. Elliott just obviously T. S. Elliott obviously has an an unresolved issue with with the Samoan tsunami and the holy rollers, ever the opportunists, the crafty vets took advantage and are your new MC. CW Tag Champs. It's a night of new champs. It's a night of history. It's the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup. Tiny Tim, did somebody say extreme? Yeah, I, th I think I heard that. Uh, I think that word's been buzzing around the MCW locker room. I think that word's been buzzing around the landscape for quite some time now. And there's a reason for that. And these two gentlemen here, I use the term loosely, are not the reason for that. Well, I tell you what, we saw these two guys earlier. <laughs> These two guys are a little bit earlier tonight. They are half breaks, little hitmen. Of course, they couldn't. Uh, Stooges. Couldn't Stooges. Help. Call it like it is. They're as Stooges as lackeys. And that's the great tragedy. Because I look at guys like Tyler Hilton. I look at a guy like Adam Cole. And Adam Cole reminds me of like a young Joey Mercury, man. He really does. Well, forget that thought. Screw that thought. Who gives a crap what I'm talking about? The innovator of violence is about to arrive back here in Maryland Championship Wrestling. And ladies and gentlemen, the team of Tommy Dreamer and Kobian making their way down to ringside. Have you ever seen, would you want to see those two guys in a dark alley? I sure as hell wouldn't. I've seen Tommy Dreamer in a dark alley before. I don't even want to know how that transpired. Well, I'm just glad we were, uh, I was on the same side as him. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about Tommy Dreamer. The guys like the modern day Mr. Miyagi of professional wrestling. No man has ever been more of a mentor to the young up-and-comers than Tommy Dreamer. There is no hate in his heart for Adam Cole or Tyler Hilton. What you're about to witness is a heavy dose of tough love. Smarten up, kid. Don't mess with the ECW former champ. Looks like Tyler Hilton has something to say. Writing checks that ass can't cash. Excuse my language. Of jobbers, maybe.
Yeah, things have been interesting tonight. Put the Rage title on the line. It's either go big or go home. And it looks like Adam Cole has accepted Tommy Dreamer's deal. If Hilton and Cole win, they get a shot at TNA. But if Dreamer or Kobe and win or whoever bets them, you're looking at the new Rage champion. Uh, and, and that's why, uh, hold on. Well, like him or hate him, love him or love him, whatever the case may be, Adam Cole and Tyler Hilton are tremendous talents. They're two guys. They're two guys that would get a shot in TNA eventually, no matter what. They may get a shot on their own accord. They don't need to win this match, but that just shows the inexperience, the greenness on the part of Adam Cole and Tyler Hilton. He's willing to put the title on the line. He was just suckered in by the innovator of violence, Tommy Dreamer. And Tyler Hilton and Kobe are going to get the start in this matchup. Tyler Hilton trying to go for an early advantage on Kobe, and the Kobeans not feeling it at all. Kobe and Tyler Hilton in a bit of a stare down, shove down, pushing contest. Kobe is a guy I've seen around the bend quite a few times, man. Seen him here in Maryland and Baltimore. Saw him in Louisville, Kentucky, and OVW. He's a guy. It just call it, call it like it is, man. The offense ain't pretty. The offense ain't pretty, but it's power. And he's got something that the people latch on to, the people love. And let's see if that can lead him to victory because he's got nobody better in his corner than the modern-day Mr. Miyagi of professional wrestling, Tommy Dreamer, who may dish out some tough love here tonight. Because nobody, no, nobody, Mark, I just want to paint this picture for you. Nobody cares more about the professional wrestling industry and the young people in it than that man, Tommy Dreamer. You know what? You're absolutely right. And Tommy Dreamer, his name is synonymous with ECW. I mean, how many people out there want single name is is synonymous with an entire organization not many people but that man is he's you like you can tell the people at ringside are calling it they want to see dreamer in action kobe and, and dreamer are going to give them what they want so it looks like dreamer and cole are going to lock it up here and i i'm pretty sure that the rage champion is is maybe uh biting off a little more than he can chew there tiny you go to any locker room in the professional wrestling world and i guarantee you more than half of that locker room has somehow been impacted by Tommy Dreamer. Whether they looked up to him, whether he offered him a piece of advice, or whether he beat the snot out of him. They have been impacted one way or another by the innovator of violence. And it's good to see him back, man. I've been impacted a great deal by Tommy Dreamer. Tough love, lesson number one. And Tommy Dreamer is turning the, turning the game around on Adam Cole here. Tommy Dreamer the veteran, the legend himself, and now Cole is asking. He really is, me. man. But I want to point. He's out, a legend, dude. He is. I want to point out one thing. You can we can say what we want about Cole and, and and Hilton there, but you know deep down inside the amount of respect that everyone in that ring has oh, yeah. for Tommy Dreamer and mutual coming from him as well is is unexplainable. And that and that's sort of sometimes 
when you fear something, you bow up to it greater. And I think that's what's going on. Hold on. Tag or the pin. I think that's what's going on here. When you fear something or you respect it, you try to you try to take it down. It's like it's like the student taking down the master. It's almost overcompensation. I think that's what we're seeing out of Tyler Hilton and Adam Cole. Well, I tell you what, the student Cole right now is uh, is hurting a little bit. Kobe and the legal man, he misses with that elbow. Here comes Tyler Hilton. Kobe's hurt right now. He's still hurting from that move where he got nothing but Matt. Tyler Hilton now trying to turn the turn the page in this match and make put it in the favor of him himself and Cole. It's Tyler Hilton, man. He is very impressive. And so is Adam Cole. Like I said, he reminds me of a young Joey Matthews or Joey Mercury, as he's better known. But the arrogance, man, it, it catches up to you. The disrespect, it catches up to you. And these may be finally the comeuppance that these two have had had. Here comes a pin. Coming to them for a while. And a two count there. Made the tag here. Now the legal man with Tyler Hilton. Something I want to, I want you to consider. See, as a broadcast journalist, sometimes I get the inside story, Mark. You ought to pull out your notepad, take some notes on this. Tommy Dreamer had a family issue, man. A family issue this weekend. And he is here competing. Competing. Not because he has to. But because he has respect for the business. Because he has respect for this event. That is the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup. It's a, it's a great, I can't say enough good things there's about him. You, there's not enough words to explain what this man has meant to this business. What's meant to every single one of us. And part of this business. And keep in mind, the guy's got a, a hardcore justice right around the corner. Probably one of the more brutal events he's ever been a part of in TNA. And he's here competing. Absolutely. Tyler Hilton with a kick to the back of Dreamer. But Dreamer says, hell no. And gives it right back. Cole almost goes on the outside, but he manages to stop. However, Tommy Dreamer regains control again. And Cole's doing whatever the heck he can to keep from going in. I was going to say, keep your eye on a Tyler Hilton. I thought he was going to come as Oh, shade to the macho man, Randy Savage, with that sit-down clothesline. You know, it's funny. Adam, What's funny? Adam Cole, he actually reminds me of even a little bit further back. He reminds me of one of the Rockers. Which one? Well, he's got the moves of Shawn Michaels, but he's got the look of Marty Jannetty. Well, it, it, I don't know, maybe it's the neon pants, but uh, that's I, what I see when I look at this guy we, every time I see him compete. I, I, I think this is a... Uh, I, I, I think this is a moment where we can never say... We can say Adam Cole and Tyler Hilton have the upper hand, but Tommy Dreamer is the consummate underdog. This guy has been beaten up more times than he's beaten people up. And he always comes back. He's the Rocky Balboa of professional wrestling. You know what? It ain't how hard you hit, it's how hard you get hit and get back up. That's the story of the innovator of violence. Tommy Dreamer's gonna have to get up rather quick here because Tyler Hilton seems to be in complete control of this right now. He looking to make the tab. Adam Cole's in, and that was a legal man. Tommy Dreamer in the corner of Cole or of Adam Cole and Tyler Hilton. And, and let's not forget, man, what's at stake? A tryout for Adam Cole and Tyler Hilton at TNA and the Rage TV, excuse me, the Rage Championship on the line here. If Tommy Dreamer pins Adam Cole or Tyler Hilton, he becomes the Rage, uh, the Rage Champion. If Kobe pins him, he becomes the Rage Champion. And what would that mean? I almost hope Tommy Dreamer gets the, gets the pinfall because that means he's representing MCW and TNA and Hardcore Justice. That's amazing and looks like Tommy Dreamer is... Going to the midsection of Cole, Cole doing whatever he can, the young and up-and-comer trying to take control, and he does, at least for the moment. He seems to be getting a little cocky, saying, by Tommy Dreamer, he's going to go to the outside. Dreamer needs to make a tag or, or yeah. come up with something. They say, you know, if an atom bomb, if an atom bomb hit the world of professional wrestling, or the world at all, the things that would remain would be cockroaches and Tommy Dreamer because the guy will not die. He will not go away. And in comes Kobian, a man who can learn a lot from his tag team partner. Kobian, a pure fan.
physical specimen, pure power, and don't let his size fool you. He's, he's quick. He's quick and he's powerful, and that's a deadly combination. Ex I'll tell you what, Cole's in trouble. Explosive may be the word. Expl like, like we saw earlier out of the former champ, uh, Kent Brink, Pat Brink, explosiveness. Choke slam. Here comes a pin. Tyler Hilton breaks that up. Tommy Dreamer's going to come inside and, and show Tyler Hilton where he belongs. Tommy Dreamer's a guy who fought his whole life to become the ECW champion. Finally uh, achieved that goal. And tonight he may achieve his goal of becoming the Rage champion. Or will Kobian? Or will neither? Maybe we'll see Adam Cole and, and Tyler Hilton in TNA. You never know. And that's one of the great things that is MCW. Um, what did that, what, what? I'm sorry, I think things are going to get a little extreme here by my calculations. Well, enter ECW, enter the trash can, enter the sticks, enter everything but the kitchen sink. In fact, who knows, maybe we will see a kitchen I, I think, uh, you know, I, I feel like I'm doing shoddy broadcasting work because I forgot that this was Extreme Rules. I forgot this was no disqualification. It's almost too much to keep track of, man. We got a title on the line. We got an opportunity on the line. And we got Extreme Rules. Not to mention the finals of the Shane Shamrock Cup still to come. Yeah, I got to tell you, these fans can't see my face, but you can. And, and I'm grinning here from here right now. I'm watching Tommy Dreamer in an extreme match. And this guy invented the word extreme. Invented it trademarked it and made it famous uh, you know uh, the innovator of, uh, of violence it's a cool little moniker this guy made it mean something gave it body gave it breath gave it life gave it birth Tommy Dreamer may be the baddest man <laughs> In the building, ouch! Ouch is right. What 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 is Tommy Dreamer got on a Adam Cole over there? That would be a Singapore cane. No, but what's what? But what's on him? What the hell is that? Looks like a space heater. Holy God! It's a mailbox. It's a mailbox. It is indeed. Oh, oh. I was way off. You know, it's it's funny. You gotta see you gotta see all these kids here at ringside watching Tommy Dreamer in action, hardcore style. Many of these kids have probably never seen him before. Could be that trademark pump handle with the Singapore cane. Yo! And that's why he's the innovator of violence. Uses a weapon in an offensive maneuver. Going for the pin. Two. And Tyler Hilton barely gets inside to make the save. But you know, these kids have probably never seen him. I gotta tell you, I feel like I feel like a kid again watching Tommy Dreamer. Come well, the memories back. Like there's you wouldn't um, you wouldn't I, I I look like a kid, you feel like a kid. What a tandem we make. Tyler Hilton going to the top, perhaps. Papa Dreamer says, not today, son. Trio woe. Well, um, look at Tyler. Tyler knows what's coming. <laughs> he knows what's coming. Uh, the guy grew up on Dreamer. Imagine being in there with your childhood hero, not being in there with him, but he's beating the crap out of you. The magic in this place, you can just feel the hair on the back of your neck standing up right now. Boom! Holy hell, he'll be feeling that for a couple of weeks. Kobe's down, Hilton's down. Yeah, th th this isn't panning out. You got to think how Tyler Hilton, Adam Cole originally expected it to. Oh, and a rake to the eyes, both of them. Double low blow in stereo, the roll -ups. Two. Whoa. Only a two count. That close, that close to, to taking up Tommy on his word of a TNA tryout. Adam Cole wants this bad, and so does Tyler. He Hilton. wants it on so many levels. Not only does he want the opportunity in TNA, but now he wants to he wants to make sure he takes home the Rage Championship. Tyler Hilton trying to put Dreamer into a trash can. Dreamer doesn't think so, but here comes Hilton. 
Up, oh, you know Kramer what the, counters. You know what's coming, bro. Beautiful. Oh my you ever God! Seen a more picture perfect move. Kobe and back on his feet with the trash can. Cole up on Dreamer's shoulders. Boom! Good night, Gracie. Death Valley driver onto that trash can. This is what I was talking about. It's tough love. And the torture rack on Adam Cole. I certainly wouldn't want to yes, be in yes, position. Yes, yes, yes. And he taps. He taps. It's a night of new champions, Mark. <laughs> in this Extreme Rules Tag Team matchup. Man, I, if I died right now, I'd be a happy man. That was, that was so, amazing. So would I. Again, an historic night. Night where we crowned a new MCW Heavyweight Champ and Ryan McBride. A night where we crowned new MCW Tag Team Champs. And the Holy Rollers, and tonight when we crammed Kobe and his TV champ. Man, it's grown so much. Thank you so much for caring. I thank you guys for supporting. You know, I know there's a lot of people that have been waiting for this matchup. Tiny Tim, I'm one of those myself. This is a special women's matchup scheduled for one fall. And this young lady, this young lady is an up-and-comer herself. She's been trying to prove herself in the business. Mia, my, Mia Yim. Get it right, Mia Yim. She hasn't made it to WWE or TNA yet. She's working on But it she's still a knockout and she's still a diva. Oh. You totally would. I think I might be in love. Well, this may be a rude awakening for me and him. That's right. Mickey James, Mickey James is a woman I've known for over 10 years now, and uh, she's a she's a woman that treats everybody with respect and kindness. This girl I've known for about 10 minutes, and uh, she was a complete jerk in the back, man. To put it lightly, That's probably just because you didn't know how to talk to her. You gotta you gotta schmooze him. You gotta. I gotta schmooze him. Bring her flowers. That music can mean only one thing. Ladies and gentlemen, Mickey James may or may not teach Miss Mia Yim a few things. May or may not. No, she's going to teach her something. I don't give a crap, man. I'm biased. Go get a Mickey girl. sure she winked at me when she was up on the top rope there, Tiny. I don't know if you saw that, but I'm pretty sure she winked right at me. Are you? I'm pretty sure. You know, we're, we're, uh, we're right in front of the camera. Maybe it was to the hard cam. No, no, not at all. Not I want you to, uh, I want you to understand something, buddy. It's so hard to make an impression and impact in professional, in professional wrestling and sports entertainment. But, 
Being a woman and making an impact is even harder. What you're looking at right there is one of the greatest female professional wrestlers and sports entertainers ever. Ever to lace the boots, ever to put on the tights. That's a future Hall of Famer. And you know what? Don't forget, she's beauty personified. I mean, have you ever seen a more beautiful, graceful woman in this business who knows not only how to look good, but how to prove herself inside the squared circle? I've seen Mickey compete in front of 20 people. I've seen Mickey compete in front of over 70,000 people. And now tonight, she returns to Maryland Championship Wrestling. This is a woman who has multiple WrestleManias under her belt. This is a former women's champion, a former Divas champion, which is unprecedented to the best of my knowledge. A woman that, that pretty much redefined female professional wrestling. And I knew she would the second I met her, the second I knew her. Something special about this girl, man. Mia Yim may be starting to realize that uh, this might not be as easy as she thought against the veteran here. She may have, you know, uh, she may think in her mind that, you know, Mickey James has been around a long time. Maybe she's slowing up a little bit. But I don't think, I think finally Mia Yim is starting to realize maybe this isn't going to be as easy as she thought. Well, no, this isn't. She didn't think this was going to be easy. What are you, a, what are you, a saying, little look slow? Look on her face. Well, of course, it's what we talked about with Tommy Dreamer. When you're facing your idols, you got to swell up that pride. you got to psych yourself out, man. No. you got to get yourself fired up when you're stepping in there with somebody that you grew up watching, somebody that inspired you. That's the only way you're going to beat them. I saw a little bit of arrogance. That's all. And Mickey James with the reversal. Here comes a pin. One, two. Look at Mickey, man. The girl can wrestle. The girl can talk. The girl can... What, what, what can't she do, man? Just sick. Just sick with it is Mickey James. That's Mickey all I got working to say. on the arm of Mia here. Mia Yin trying to reverse it. Makes a reversal. And, and an unbelievable person as well. Done so much work with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Done so much uh, charity work over the years. Tribute to the troops. And it, it's nonstop. Now a country music sensation as well. Putting her time in in Nashville. The girl's a one-woman conglomerate. I asked her, what the hell are you doing, Mickey? What are you doing? She goes, I got my own makeup line coming out. I'm building an empire. Cover. You know, I don't know if you know this, Tiny Tim, but in my younger... I know everything. Uh, ...formidable years, I was actually an aspiring country singer-songwriter myself. I don't know if you know that or... Well, what was your hit song? Uh, my hit song was called Don't Let the Door Hit Your Ass on the Way Out. Uh, that's pretty ironic, because that's what they're going to be saying to you after the show. Look at this. Hold on. The hammerlock by me, Yim. You're just quick with the, with, the, with the jokes. With the jokes. I'm a stand-up comic, fool. Just trying to keep up. Mia Yim trying to which take is, control of this. Which is sad because I'm handicapped. There's the kick. The jokes. Oh, look at that. The Thaz Press. A little Louise Thaz Press. Out of Mickey James. Firing away. Mickey James trying to get this crowd fired up. And I don't know if they can get any more fired up than they already are for you this know, Oh, they can for Mickey. You feel the electricity, man. And that's something that Mickey feeds off of. But that's also something that may be getting in the head of Mia Yim. She's green. She's new. She's, a, she's, a, she's not a seasoned competitor. Something else to consider. Imagine if Mia Yim were to able to pin, submit, even get any sort of victory over Mickey James. The bragging rights that comes with that are, are incomparable in this business. And Mickey James getting tired of waiting. She wants Mia in the ring. Mickey James, a veteran, not messing around here. Mia Yim back in the ring. Mickey James wants wants to be in control of this one all the way to the end. And she goes right to the See, gut of and Mia that's, Yim. And that's Mia hesitating there. She had an opportunity for an advantage. That's Mia being intimidated by the presence of Mickey James. Look at the far leg. And just a two count there. Mickey calling for it. See, see this? Mickey's one of those people, man. She just got it. The people love her. I don't know what it is. It's just something. 
It's just something you can't define. You can't put your finger on. You're absolutely right. Oh, and Mia Yim with a kick right to the back of the head of Mickey James. Mickey James is hurting as she falls to the ring apron there. And now down to the hard concrete floor. Mia's got a lot to learn. A lot to learn. But there's no better time than the present. And she may be taken to school right now. This may be graduation for Mia Yim as she's able to pull away Mickey James. You know what? You're absolutely right. One of my men tours and broadcasting once told me if you're going to learn to swim, you got to be thrown into the deep end. And that's what's going on right here. She's going up against one of the best of all time and she's going to, one way or another, come out of this match, win, lose, but she's going to be a better competitor for it. Word up, man. Word up. It's called baptism by fire. It's called baptism by fire. Sink or swim, son. Throw it, son, son. Throw you in. Oh, you either drown or you flourish. You either die or you flourish. And Mia Yip yeah. right now is flourishing. She's becoming a better competitor right before our very eyes. And she lays in that kick to the future Hall of Famer, Mickey James. And I know for a fact Mickey is not happy about that. Lay in those forearms. Mickey those forearms James. got a little stank on them. Did you feel that over here? Mickey James going to work on Mia Yim. Going to the reverse turnbuckle. Mickey James again into the corner. Mia Yim barely able to get out of that one by reversing. And Mickey, uh, Mickey may be a little hurtier. I mean, I mean, th those kicks definitely rocked her. As you see, this dragon sleeper applied. But that's the that's the, 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 the unawareness on the part of Mia Yim. See how close Mickey is to those ropes? Mia Yim should have drugged Mickey out to the middle of that ring, slapped on the hold. And Mickey's so flexible, look at her bridging out of it. No doubt Mickey James using all the knowledge she's accumulated. Oh, ow! Over the ow! Ow! To try Crap! To Did you see? God dang, man, those knees. And that's a testament to Mia Yim. She's still standing after that. Mia Yim going for the quick pin here. One, two. And Mickey James able to get out. And, the, and there's the ring awareness. You see Mickey kicks out of it, goes toward the ropes. Pin. One, two. Hold on, rolls her up. Shoulders One, down. Two. Trying again. One, two. It's going to take a little bit more see, than that to see Mickey James out of this one, Tiny. See Mickey, Mark, see her going towards the ropes to pour herself up. Knows where she is at all times. Mickey has a decade of experience under her pretty little waist, and she is a bad, bad woman. Well, let's see how she gets out of this one. A submission move here on the part of... Oh, uh, well, there we talked about it, man. The, the disrespect toward your idols. That's what's coming into play here for Mia Yim. Mickey James isn't going to take that sitting down, or in this case, kneeling. Well, it, it, here's the thing, too. No, Ow! I tried. You, you can't have you can't have respect in the in, in, in the ring between the confines of those ropes in that squared circle. Respect almost has to go out the window in a lot of ways because respect can intimidate you. Respect can can hinder your offense, can hinder your progress, can stop you from doing what you got to do to pick up a win and make a name for yourself. You know, you're absolutely right, Tiny. Mia Yim, the first one to get to her feet. Mickey James with the block and the forearm to the face. But Mia Yim comes back. See that? And she another doesn't block. Another she forearm. Forearm. Mia Yim is going to be seeing stars after this one. Mickey James misses. Mickey James with the clothesline. And she just doesn't have the sting that Mickey has behind those blows. You see how Mickey gets the most out of every maneuver, gets the most impact out of everything she executes. Good night. Here comes the pin. One, two. See, I think that's, and you won't see that often out of Mickey James, taking a little too much time. I think she could have had Mia in there. Took a little too much time to go for that cover. Well, Mickey James doesn't usually make mistakes like that. We're going to see what she does with it now. Mia Yim trying to get out of the ropes for a breather, but Mickey James says, I don't think so. Well, you know what that means when you're a, a multi-time champion? 
What does that mean? It means you've lost the title before. So everybody makes mistakes, but will she make a big one here tonight if she doesn't uh, doesn't take advantage of her experience and capitalize on Mia Yim, who has proven to me she ain't no pushover, son. She's here. She's a player, and she's here to uh, play for keeps. Mickey James puts Mia Yim into the corner. Beautiful Northern Lights. Can you bridge out? One, two. Oh, man. Not enough. Not enough. The youngster, Mia Yim, isn't going to go out without a fight. Well, uh, well, that's usually a maneuver where you bridge over, but Mickey able to float over and get more of the cover out of it than a bridge. Able to put her whole body across that of Mia Yim. Ow. I think Mickey James is ready to take her to school. That's what I think. Look at the face of these these two ladies in this I, ring and I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a, a, a any competitor man or female that executes those forearm shivers better than mickey james hey guess what they call this trademark james baby ow one two referee referee sees it that's Beautiful. great officiating Offici on the part of yes. fcw officiating right here miriam tried to get tried to use the ropes for leverage but it was broken up. Mickey James may have been saved a little bit there. Not, not today, son. Not today. I keep saying son after seeing uh, fed up. Son. I, somebody's just got to stop giving them a mic. No, uh, this is this is a mistake on me, Yim. Get Mickey out of that corner. Pull her to the center of the ring. Don't waste any time for the setup. Stay on her. Give her breathing room. I guarantee you she'll breathe. And Mickey James, just like that. That was eight ball in the corner pocket. Mia Yim sizing up her opponent. Mia Yim, the youngster, the up and comer, misses that on was James. A James yeah. counters. Ah! Wow! Lights out. One, two, three, and Mickey James is your winner. Well, Tiny Tim, it looks like it's time for all the marbles. Well, this is why we do this. For moments like this, the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup 2010 Finals. This is why these competitors put their bodies, their careers, their lives on the line. For a capture a moment, to capture lightning, magic in a bottle, just for a second. And there's a man who made three-peat. He's won twice. Can he do it for an unprecedented third time? That's right, Christian York, the first of the competitors to make his way down to the ring. And, and keep in mind, this is an elimination matchup. Not first pinfall, elimination. So it's gonna come down. We start off with six. It's gonna come down to two. And like I said, there's my odds on favor. Tommaso Ciampa. Tommaso Ciampa. Look at this guy eyeing up the cut, man. He's a guy that has that hunger, that wants it more, I think, than anybody else. And that's something you got to question. Christian York's been to the dance before. Yeah, he's got the experience, but is he as hungry as that sadistic freak show right there? You just look at the look in his eyes. He looks like a, a curled up snake, just ready to jump at you. Ready to uncoil, and he just may do so in this matchup. Look at him, sizing up Christian, staring him right in the face. Christian staring right back. I don't think Christian York's afraid. Christian York ain't afraid of nothing, man. Except maybe a pair of scissors on that, those dreadlocks. I think it's the 21st century, he might use clippers now. Just a thought. And here comes the crowd erupts. That can only be one person. Teddy Stigma making his way down. Could it be a night 
where tag, former tag team partners both go out with some form of goal. The night's been interesting, as we've said. It's been unpredictable, though. When you enter a tournament like this, not only do you have to condition yourself better physically, you got to condition yourself mentally because you don't know. You have no clue who you're going to be facing. The only sure, sure thing in this was Ryan McBride. But guess what? He won the MCW Heavyweight title earlier. And usually they get a bye. Usually you enter the finals fresh. McBride ain't doing that this year, man. Even playing field. You know what? You're absolutely right. This year's a little different. This time all competitors in the ring are on level footing. It's a clean slate. They both, they've all had to compete one match before. So really, it's anybody's game, Tiny. Anybody's game. But you know who my odds on favorite is? Here comes Sammy Callahan. Sammy Callahan used nothing but power and craziness in his qualifying matchup to win. And he doesn't he doesn't look like he's tired at all. He looks like he's ready to compete. He wants that Shamrock Cup. Unorthodox, did you see that? Just put the gun, the finger gun to the head of Tommaso. Pulled the trigger. Tommaso didn't budge an inch. Again, that's why they're in there and I'm out here, because I would never do that. I'm just saying. I, I like the, you know, it's like a, it's it's like seeing a, a big time prize fight, you know, and you see the champions or, or the competitors, excuse me, before they come out, you see the look in their eyes. I like the demeanor. I like watching the demeanor of these guys. Christian York, a little more relaxed. Been to the dance before. Sammy Callahan, something to prove. Teddy Stigma looks a little bit nervous. As does this man, quite possibly. And here comes the youngster, the up and comer, the man who defeated. Ruckus in his qualifying match. Ruckus, a former cup winner and champion himself, to get into this matchup. Match Here is Rich Swan. It'll be interesting to see what part he plays in this dance tonight. And if we're going off pure chagrin, pure composure, again, I gotta give it to Tommaso Ciampa. The guy is unfazed. I feel like you could, uh, you could drop a body. He you could set the ring on fire, that the place could explode, and the guy would have the same look on his face. Hey, you got you love this guy, man. I, I've known him for a while, man. I've seen what he's capable of. I've seen the evolution of him, and I just think it's his time, man. I uh, think it's his time. His previous his qualifying matches, any indication of what he can do, then I think he's going to be just fine in this match up here. Now this is a uh, well. Hold on. This guy's had a busy night, hadn't he? Absolutely. Normally you pack your gags and you go home after you win the heavyweight championship. That's how his night started. That's how our night started. We crowned a new MCW heavyweight champ. And now he will go into 2010 to compete for the Shamrock Memorial Cup. And there he is, Ryan McBride with the heavyweight title around his waist, Irish flag in hand, he makes his way down to the ring to see if he can repeat as Shamrock Cup champion. There's something to consider as you see one of the most coveted prizes in professional wrestling enter the ring. There's something to consider. Ryan McBride, while Christian York is the only man to ever win two times, Ryan McBride could be the first ever to win back-to-back -back Shamrock Memorial Cups. 2009's winner, and right now, as of this moment, that trophy belongs to him. Will it at the end of this matchup? Absolutely. Now, I can't help but notice, I can't help but point out, Ryan McBride's ribs are taped up. No doubt a result of that amazing insane championship title belt that he had to open uh, up uh, tonight with uh, where he won the title. Uh, this is a six-man elimination match. Ladies and
see this is what they came to do sit back and enjoy sit back and watch six of the greatest athletes in this sport today go at it for one of the most prestigious prizes in the business the Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup 2010s well, looks like we're ready to get underway here in this elimination style matchup the winner of which will hoist up that trophy and, and, and have his name etched into the trophy. Have his name etched into the walls of history. A name that goes along with current competitor Christian York, Keenan Creed, WWE superstar, Straight Edge Society's own, Joey Mercury, Tom Reckless Youth Carter, Ruckus, Josh Daniels, Derek Frazier, and also Ryan McBride. Two men in the ring, four in each corner. Tags can happen at any moment, elimination style as you said. Well it looks like Tomasa Ciampa 
seems to be in control early on, but then all of a sudden, here comes a quick win. How about uh, uh, Stigma seems to be a... Uh, <laughs> God, there's so many great competitors involved in this matchup. Chiapa trying to... On those long legs. Trying to work. You know what? That's what you got to do. You got to oh. the legs first. And there's those knees. We've seen those knees used as lethal weapons by Tommaso. Look at the near leg. Oh, near fall. Teddy Stigma almost got himself eliminated there. What? Here comes the tag. Here's the only man to win two Shamrock Memorial Cups in a row. A guy who has more history, speaking of history being made, a guy who has more history here in Maryland Championship Wrestling than any of these guys in this match combined. You better believe it. Teddy Stigma seems to be at the receiving end. Do you, do you, can I, Christian York on, attack. Here like, let, me, let me just run something by you real Absolutely. quick. Absolutely. Christian York is a guy who has worked everywhere as in employment. He has been employed by ECW, been employed by World Championship Wrestling, the now defunct WCW. He has been employed by WWE, World Wrestling Entertainment. Been everywhere, wrestled everybody against the best in the world and has beaten them and now he takes on, tries to three-peat the cover. Man, I, 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 Teddy Stigma tried to do what he could to eliminate Christian York right there. Christian York, the veteran of the Shamrock Cup, not going to go down that easy. Rich Swan tagged into this matchup here. Rich Swan, the legal man with Christian York. And usually there's, I, I feel, and I could be wrong, I feel like there's more guys in the Cup that usually have experience in the Cup. This year there's only two. Look at York! Beautiful T-Bone! York using his obviously... Well, here comes the cover. One, two, three. York using his obvious superiority two. power. What did I say? I forget about it. Hey, hey, hold on. Let's talk about the story before the bell. How about this guy, this psychopath, this sociopath, this nutcase, Sammy Callahan, licking the trophy. We're over here... God dang, he was just fish hooking, fish hooking Rich Swan. We're over here with the family of Brian Hauser. We're over here with the family of Shane Shamrock at our broadcast booth. A a and the disgust in their face, man, Absolutely. when they saw him disrespect the trophy. But I, I don't necessarily, I, I think that's all perspective. I think that guy, that's his way of paying tribute. And one, two. He may be that twisted. Thank you. He may be twisted that way. That may be his way. It may just be the way he's wired. Rich Swan here, and Rich Swan uh, right back. Sammy Callahan, you could hear that in the parking lot. Hell, you oh, could hear that on the other side of the intersection. Oh, a sadist to say the way. Look at Christian York looking on saying, I remember what it was to be young once. Ow. Wowzers. Smokes. That was awesome. Sammy Callahan is eliminated. The hardest hitting man on the East Coast just got tossed out of the East Coast. Rich Swan, and then just like that, Ryan McBride, your MCW champion. Yeah, it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long hitchhike back to New Jersey. He does remind me of a drifter a little bit. That not one that I would pick up on the side. Yeah, I'll tell you that much. I bet the I bet his trunk stinks of uh, well. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> I feel like I've seen him on forensic files before, but he's gone. He gone. He gone. Tag in Tommaso for Tommaso. Tommaso now the legal man. Look at the calm, the cool, the calculating. Tommaso Chapa taking advantage. I don't think Rich taking his spot. The tag. I don't think he saw the tag, Tiny. Hell no, he did. Paying for it now. Tommaso Ciampa now in control. Taking, trying to take down Christian York. Trying to take down. Teddy Stigma in the ring. Uh-oh, well. And that just, it looks like he barked up the wrong tree, and now we're getting a little double-team action here. Yeah, a little. Ain't nothing little about Christian York and Teddy Stigma. A little manage 3 if you will. Well, it, it's, well, see? And that's how it spills out in the cup. They know it's elimination. Even if you're not the legal man, even if you're not the legal man, you can still wear somebody down for elimination. You're absolutely right. Teddy Stigma, Christian York going at it in the center of the ring. Ryan McBride on his feet outside. The other two competitors are face first on the mat. 
And Teddy Stigma and Christian York now on the outside. Interesting. Keep this in mind. Did you see Ryan McBride, our MCW heavyweight champ? Just watch as Teddy Stigma and Christian York were brawling it, standing there. Could have done something. Didn't. That shows there's no allegiance except to the cup in this he match. Uses his, he uses his mind. Rich Swan right here in front of the broadcast booth. And now Tommaso Ciampa is now alone in the ring and everyone else Come seems on. to be scattered on the concrete below. Come on, Tommaso. Prove me right, man. Rich Swan trying to get something going here, but the sure power of Ciampa is not going to let it happen. You know what? Tommaso! Yow! He reminds My me! Back. He reminds me of an American psycho! He's got to return some videotapes! Feed me a cat! The American psycho! Tom I just named him that! I like that name! The American I I'm genius in the American psycho! I don't care if anybody else in wrestling, indie wrestling, professional wrestling has that name! This guy is the American psycho, pretty Tommaso Ciampa! Actually, it was a pretty good movie! I just said, I have to return some videotapes! <laughs> it's a line from the movie! Videotapes? Here Never comes the mind. So you have yet to purchase a DVD or anything like that? It's a line from American Psycho. Hold on the cradle. Who just... I know. I, I, I was just uh, going. Uh, 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 was well, going. look at this. Well, look at this. Speaking of going, Christian York was just going through that pinfall and now got that camel clutch, a variation of it, or Tommaso Ciampa. Tommaso Ciampa eliminated two competitors. He's still going strong, showing no signs of being tired. Christian York... Christian York needs to pull himself together or make a tag. And we talked about this. Tommaso is conditioned for a tournament style uh, evening, for a tournament style event. He's competed in the Super 8. He's competed all over the nation. Sure enough, going to compete all over the world. Cover by Christian. And, and now he's in there with a guy who's competed all over the world already in Christian York. Worked for every major organization. Tommaso Ciampa's one of those guys. He's one match away from that big break. Absolutely. Trying to break, trying to break Christian whoa, York whoa, whoa. Right here. Christian York. Oh man, those knees. Did you see how Tommaso used his own weight, his own agility? Get those knees in. Ciampa going for that powerbomb knee drop. That's not even what it's called. I have no clue what it's called. Christian York. Ow! Control. God dang! York! Christian York trying to go for a pin. One, two, three. Well. And that, and now that, that takes you. You're done. I'm sorry your guy's gone, but you know what? You got to give him credit where credit is awesome. due. He had a heck of a match up until that point. He was awesome. And, that, and then there were three, and, and this now, is what we talked here about. Here we go. Tag, former tag team partners, former tag team champions. Nothing but respect, love, and admiration between these two competitors. But you know for a fact that when it comes down to it, they'll go at it, but they'll do it with respect for each other. And Christian York's just going to sit back and watch. I got a new pick. And who would that be? The guy's got the ball rolling. He's got the momentum. Ryan McBride is going to be the only man ever in history thus far to win back-to-back. Shane Shamrock Memorial Cups. You know what? And 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 I tell you what, that would make that would put him up there with some of the greats that have had to claw and work their way up the ladder of success to get to the top of the mountain. Ryan McBride is there right now, and I think he wants to take it to the very, very apex of this company. And, and, and this is interesting. A curious move on the part of Christian York. Because he could have let the two tag team partners, the two friends, duke it out. Instead, he chooses to interject himself. I wonder what's going through his head. But come on, Timmy. Do you really think that he wants to sit back, or do you think he wants to be in this matchup? Ah, true, true, true that. True that, son, son. Oh, God. Look at this. Even... Oh, God. A human cannonball. I mean, imagine if I just picked you up, if I were physically possible, and used you as a weapon. That's what Christian York just said. Oh, but York. York. Catching himself on that top rope. And that's a problem, man. Those mats are slick. Those ropes are slick. They've been wrestling all night. There's body sweat. There's everything else on it. There's all the oil that grease himself up with. 
I tell you what, man. It's just uh, there is no these three competitors in this ring right now. I mean, could you have asked for a better? Final three in this matchup. You got I mean, former tag champs, a world champion, and the only multi winner of the Shamrock Cup. Yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I mean, I, I only thing that would make me happier myself. was if I was right and my pick was still in this matchup and my pick went on the win, but obviously that's not the case. We got to deal with the present. Teddy Stigma shining up that boot. Great sweep. Look at the bridge. Two, three. Stigma is. The, he gone. He gone. And then, and then there were two. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? Teddy Stigma unhappy. Takes a cheap shot on the champ. It takes a cheap shot on I don't on like York. that, man. I don't like that. This whole thing's about respect. This whole thing's about paying tribute to Shane Shamrock. And who's this Who's this guy to come out in a moment of, uh, of losing and, and, and just and, and desecrate not only the tournament but his friendship? Who's that guy? I, I don't even know what to say. That was just completely uncalled for. Somebody needs to get that guy into the back. Well, this is this is a moment here, Mark. This is a moment. One of these two men will be the 2010, the 10th ever Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup this. winner. Look at this. And the locker room empties as it should to pay tribute to a fallen brother, to pay tribute to one of the great men in Maryland championship wrestling history. And like it does men. every year. There the you see men. former winner Keenan Creed. 2000, year 2000's winner, Bob Stark, Team Action, Earl the Pearl, Ramblin' Rich, the new tag team champs. You see the light heavyweight championship, the FCW light heavyweight championship, Frame, Shane Shamrock, the last ever MCW light heavyweight champion, side swipes in the house, good God. And now it is down to two, the reigning MCW champion and the defending cup champion, Ryan McBride, against the only multi time winning cup champion well Christian York well when it's all said and done we will be able to say that because Christian may be knocked off that pedestal the two of these men drawing in the energy of the locker room drawing the energy of all the fans at ringside and they're about to lock horns in an epic showdown the final showdown at this Shamrock Cup final match you see the family of Shane Shamrock, Brian Hauser, his mom, just made her way to ringside. His, his, his child, his, his wife, and Christian York drawing first blood. McBride go for the line. Miscommunication, but it was enough for McBride to capitalize on. Is it gonna be the greatest night in Ryan McBride's career, in his life perhaps, where he wins the, the, the heavyweight championship and goes home a two-time winner? Into the chest, Christian York back on his feet, calling for McBride to get up now. Christian York takes a foot in the face by the champ McBride. Got enough of it, but not enough to knock him down. And, and Christian York, that's where that weight advantage comes in. Big Christian York, weighing in at least 235 pounds, takes an already injured McBride. You know there's nothing, here comes the pin. One, two, and it's wow. only a two count. You know the amount of respect between these two gentlemen in this ring, that goes without saying. But to have the honor and the privilege to hoist that cup, that Memorial Cup at the end of this matchup, you know both of them want it so bad because it'll bring both of them to a level that no one has ever been before. They say in any business, in any performance business, what you want is the respect to your peers. Well, here we are. Every one of your peers is at ringside watching you. Who's taking home the respect? Who's making history? Who's going to become the 2010 Shane Chan? Memorial Cup winner, Christian. Christian counters and Ryan McBride goes into that center turnbuckle. And now
now a boot to the face. McBride, the champ, is hurting. His ribs are taped. You know he's sucking wind. He won the title earlier tonight by beating Pat Brink. Here's Shoulders down. One, two. Whoa. A close one, ladies and gentlemen. Not only that, I'm sorry. I, 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 I even overestimated the idea of having your peers there. The family of Brian Shane Shamrock Hauser is at ringside watching this. The family the of the fallen brother is here watching this. If that isn't inspiration, if that isn't fueling your tank, I don't know what the hell is, Mark. Ryan McBride up top. Christian York seems to be setting him up to do something big here. Perhaps a deciding factor in this matchup. Let's see if Ryan McBride can counter. He's trying desperately, going to work on the back of Christian York. Ryan McBride has got to do something. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slippery slope. We already saw that once. And Christian unawares. Oh, and Christian, Christian York on that. Christian caught himself though. That was a moment where it could have uh, could have really been a game changer. Ryan McBride from the top rope. A holy moly! That's one of those. Got to be it. That's got to be awesome. Well, that's one of those maneuvers. It takes as much out of you to execute it as it does to have it executed upon you. Absolutely, Ryan McBride trying to go for the pin here. One, two. Wow. I really wow. can't. I can't take this anymore, man. I mean, uh. You're gonna need some heart medication. Which one of these competitors wants it more? Which one of these competitors is gonna dig down deep inside the very core of his soul, the very core of his being? That's like saying, who's a better athlete? To hold that cup. Who wants it more? It's like saying, who's a better athlete? Muhammad Ali or Michael Jordan? There is no comparison. It's just, it's gonna come down to a mistake. It's gonna come down to a mistake, and that may be it. That may be the mistake. Two, and it was a near fall there. I don't know how McBride was able to kick out of that one. Christian York is pulling out all the stops here. I know how he was able to kick out because in the haziness, out of the corner of his eye, not only does he see the entire MCW locker room, he sees the family, the mother of Shane Shamrock at ringside. And nobody bleeds the Irish blood like Ryan McBride, our MCW heavyweight champ. Ryan McBride on the shoulders of Christian York. Looking for that knee. He misses. Ryan McBride now has Christian York on his shoulders. Death. And he executes it. Let's see if he can get the pin here and become back-to-back -back cup champion. Two. Two. Oh, God dang, man. Wow. I don't even think James Cameron could have written something this good. I mean, this is just incredible. Yeah, it's epic, dude. It's epic. And every year I say, you can't top the previous year. They can't do it. Well, guess what? They just Ryan McBride, Christian York are shoving it in my, you know, they're, they're, they're proving me wrong. McBride on the top rope. McBride misses Christian York, able to get out of the way. Hold on, he recovers though. The reflexes. York rolling through. York's York not ready though. to give up yet. Maestro Cradle. Pin two, three. And Christian York is your winner. Three P. York. Christian York, 1999, 2003, and now 2010, the only man to ever win the Shane Chamber Memorial Cup three times. You just saw history right there. And this is a moment, man. That's the only word you can use to describe it. It's absolutely amazing. I think we should let this moment, this moment live in time and sign off here. 
Absolutely. For everyone at Maryland Championship Wrestling, I'm Mark Bray. Alongside me, Tiny Tim. Let's take it to ringside. This has been the 10th Shane Shamrock Memorial Cup. And there you see a man who has made history again, Christian York, in honor of his fallen friend, fallen brother, Shane Shamrock, Brian Hauser.